I had a good course. We had planned to go back and do it again this time. And um, we ended up like, I ended up established, and he was just with the tick-borne disease. So I brought him back to her and sent it to his doctor, and I was very much happy with him. And I thought this might be something that could help. And when I had a casual response to the last request of flowers, um, we came up with this design. Um, and then we sent it to Leanne Baldwin at the University of Arizona and asked her if she could study it for us and see if it had the same effect on horses. And her study showed that after 14 minutes, um, it changed the um, heart rate of horses. And she didn't see any difference. We have a lot of customers that have had success with shipping. It's probably going to be our um, application that people can be utilizing the most. But we've also seeing horses respond well for cribbing, um, for shoeing, for schooling areas, um, for turnout. It seems to relate to almost any application where a horse is wearing a halter or wire and they need to help their back. My name is Chrissy Nancy, and this is Bill Cup.
Course available to walk with a $200,000 four star landed developed in Grand Prix. First on course at 105. Just over 20 minutes away from the one o'clock start with the four-star Ida Development Grand Prix. And uh, as our competitors walk the course, we'll have the lead line competition this afternoon. Riders joining us for the lead line today, Felipe Tejada Brooks with Honey Bunches of Oats owned by Eastwind Farms. And Liam Byrne with the Small Town Girl owned by Fiat Byrne. And Bradley Whitty and Mr. Magoo, Sweet Oak Farm Entry. We also have Sage Cagle with uh, Kim Carey's Wonderland. Cody Randall aboard Stonewall Surprise, owned by Emily Ellen Quittard. Sullivan Cagle with Wait For Me. That's an entry from Henson LLC. And Lola Turan with Roberto Turan's One Hot Pepper. And Reed Mulvey aboard at Thistledown Scotsman, owned by Lexi Furter. Gigi Granite with the Say Hello, owned by Basket Farm, and Olivia Eichner with Silhouette ES, a Lisa metric entry. Lead liners, if you would please reverse and continue at the walk. Lead liners, reverse and continue at the walk, please. Also during the walk, we have our parade of champions for week 11 and our first champion actually comes from week five to three, three performance division. And here for photos at Aventus, and week five at champion for the 3-3 performance. If all of our lead liners would please uh, line up in front of uh, our lead line judge, Liliana Revere. Just 
Next, uh, we'll honor the champion from the 2-9 Adult Amateurs uh, this week. And Bonnie McCabe piloting Luminaire to championship honors for the 2-9 Adult Amateurs. Luminaire owned by Linda Evans. And congratulations to Bonnie McCabe. Lead liners, uh, please uh, look at our judge, uh, Liliana Rivera, and wait. Smile for the camera, kids. Adult Amateur 36 through 49 at Section 8 champion up next. Another Linda Evans entry. This is Cupid and Julie Hogan, uh, the rider for Cupid to take championship honors. Next, we'll take some photos of the medium green pony champion this week for the winter equestrian festival, I Dream. This week's large pony champion up next at Boca's Pop Star and uh, Lily Herzog. Boca's Pop Star owned by Ponies and Palms at Show Stables, Week 11 champion in the Large Pony Hunters.
Hey, results are in for the lead line, and after much debating from our judge, Liliana Rivera, she has decided that all of our lead line riders are winners today. It'll be a blue ribbon for all of our contestants in the lead line this afternoon. Congratulations to Felipe Tejada Brooks with Honey Bunches of Oats, Liam Byrne with Small Town Girl, and Bradley Whitty aboard Mr. Magoo, Sage Cagle, and Wonderland. Cody Randall with the Stonewall Surprise. Sullivan Cagle with Wait For Me. Lola Turan and One Hot Pepper also receiving a blue ribbon today. In addition to Reed Mulvey with Thistledown Scotsman. Gigi Granite with his Say Hello. And Olivia Eichner with Silhouette ES. All winners in our lead line today. Congratulations, Rogers. Just under 15 minutes from the start, one o'clock for the top of the order in today's four-star Grand Prix. Well, Ida Development and uh, Barm Walkers.
goes like this. Goes like this. Well, uh, a very good afternoon and welcome ahead uh, to our Ida Developments uh, Grand Prix here this afternoon. Looking forward to this, our thanks to Ida Developments and Barn Walkers again, their continued sponsorship as part of the Winter Equestrian Festival. And uh, it is both companies working together to bring a variety of world-class products to fit every need for your farm, your horses and much more besides. You can also visit them on site here between the International Arena and Magavre warm-ups. And uh, also, of course, you can get hold of them uh, directly to talk about all your needs that are needed in the uh, wonderful developments they have of course supplying everything for the horse for uh, many of uh, not only the uh, on-site developments here but across of course all the barns here in uh, Wellington and much much beyond that as well so looking forward to uh, a beautiful day here in Wellington for our uh, $200,000 Ida Development Grand Prix brought to you or two by Dodd Technologies our uh, streaming supporter here as well as uh, they've been uh, supplying technology and support to top sports such as the NFL and the NBA for over 40 years now with this family-owned company that have been, uh, again, a major addition this year. And, of course, we brought much in addition to you with support of US Equestrian and the USCF Network as well, partnering up for our big events here throughout the Winter Equestrian Festival as well. Thanks to all of those and uh, looking forward to what comes up today as well. It's been a big week here too. And uh, Danny Waldman alongside me. Danny, uh, already with the uh, MS150 behind us last night, that was a pretty fast finish. It was. Jordan Coyle was unbelievably fast last night. Uh, I didn't think anyone was going to catch him. And uh, Connor Swale got pretty close, yeah. but it was, a, it was a great class. Okay, looking at that, we've got our next chapter in the book here this week. Uh, $200,000 Ida Development Grand Prix here. Uh, good qualifier with a win for Lily Keenan. Yep. Uh, how did that go? Yeah, qualifier was great. It was an exciting class. We had a lot in the jump off. I think 17 in the jump off. 16 of those jumped off. Um, Lily winning. She was super fast. It was a really exciting class. Anytime you have a jump off with that many in it, you know yeah. they're going to run for it. And we got to see some really top sport. Looking forward to that. Down to our final few then, as we'll see into this ju this first round from that jump off. Uh, Pia Giorgio Bucci, uh, Carlos San Guerrero, and uh, Lily Keenan in the final few. Good to see a few really interesting combinations out now. Um, Nick DeLojoyo, Cornets Cambridge, back into action. Uh, good to see there. Chloe Reed, crossover four. Oh, jumped unbelievable yeah. in the qualifier. That horse was absolutely flying. I talked to Chloe a little bit briefly before and she just said he feels amazing and uh, I think I think he's got a good shot today actually he just 
was on fire the other day. Very much ready to go. So looking forward to those. Um, early runners of the total of uh, 42 that we'll see in this class. Uh, Karen Poli comes up e early. Eugenio Gaza and Shaloris P.S. Uh, Vasco Flores and uh, then to the likes of Stella Wasserman, Jad Dana in the early run. Let's take a look at the course of what's been set by uh, Andy Christensen, our course designer this week, as we take a look here, brought to you by Fidelity Investments. And uh, we'll follow the animation round of what is to come. So uh, what lies ahead for them. Danny, what have we got today? All right, it's going to start off the left, up by the VIP tent, single oxer by itself, left-handed turn to a delicate vertical, which is the exact same color as the ground, kind of gold poles, then a nice six strides up to an oxer at the IDA fence, and then it's going to be a left-handed turn to the wall at number four. Again, we're seeing that a little bit early again in yeah. the course, like we've seen all season long. The wall by itself, then a bending eight strides down to the triple bar across the middle alongside the gazebo. Then it's going to be a short four to the offset Liverpool vertical. Very delicate there. Then left-handed turn around past the end gate, rolling all the way back to the skinny pale blue ox uh, vertical with a little gate uh, plank at the bottom. And then a little bit move up in five to the teal double oxer vertical one stride. I think that's going to ride quite difficult for uh -huh. the class. We'll see how that plays out. And then a right hand turn across the middle to the Hermes oxer. Then another bending eight strides here. You can see directly across the middle of the ring to the very delicate white plank. And then a little bit up in the three strides right into the corner of the arena. And then it's going to be a left-handed rollback turn around number two and a long run down the last line, which well, you still have a lot of jumping to yeah. do. Oxer at number 12, bending seven, which I think will end up a little bit patient for everybody. And then the triple vertical oxer, vertical again, one stride, one stride. And then bending to the last obstacle, number 14, I walked sort of eight or nine. I think we're going to see a lot of eights. Some people may stay out in the nine if they get caught. But it is a lot of jumping, a long course, and up and down the arena multiple times. Yeah, a good uh, bit of test in the final run there with the triple combination coming late in the course. As you say, you just think you finished, and you're going to go right towards the end gate, and then it's going to be sitting there for you to say, ha-ha, not <laughs> done yet. Exactly. A lot of stamina tests, and it's warm out there and humid, so... I think that'll catch a few people out. Yeah, keep something in the tank towards the end. Okay, yeah. so looking forward to uh, what's coming up here this afternoon and to uh, crown another big week. And, of course, one week left of the Winter Equestrian Festival, but we save the biggest till the last uh, with Rolex Week uh, on the horizon as well. Looking forward to all of that. Uh, so we're going to get set up for uh, what's coming up for this uh, NIDA Development uh, Grand Prix here this afternoon. Uh, four Star, we're just moments away. Danny, we're going to get into seats and uh, ready to go for a very, very a good lineup. We'll see you in a second. This afternoon, we'll have a playing of the Star Spangled Banner. If you would please rise and remove cover. Off we go then into uh, this afternoon's uh, Grand Prix and uh, first making their way out already is uh, Rally Heiler for Kurt Heiler and uh, Susan Hansen based up here in uh, Boston. Lennox uh, van der Bission for the uh, Belgian Brit Gelding by uh, Balou Bay de Rue. And uh, the good thing is, Danny, she's had some good experience with the 24-year-old this year, been uh, in a consistent g getting out there into the big Grand Prix, and I think that's probably going to pay dividends down by the time we get to this part of the season. Absolutely. I think she's had a really good season so far and uh, been jumping up at this high level kind of consistently 
all season long. Excited to see what she can do to get us started. Again, we went through the course, but I will take you through it again as she starts out. Time allowed is 78 seconds. And uh, it seems short enough. I think there's a lot of jumping to be done today. Yeah. And I think the course actually walked quite big. The wall is very tall. The plank is very tall. So let's see what she can do. All right, again, off the left, two number one, IDA, Development Oxer. No number here, I think. This delicate vertical. Six, just a nice six there. She just moved up a little bit at the end, has the front pole down, then left-handed turn to the tall wall. Good jump. Four, five, six, seven, eight to the triple bar. Very short there in the four. It's going to be a difficult four stride all day long, especially with that Liverpool coming out. So just doesn't quite get it done enough. The skinny here. Five works out really nice for her. She's sitting on a horse with a very big stride, so she got up that five easily. Now right-handed turn across the middle to the Hermes Oxer. Has the front pole of that. I think she does eight to the plank. Three moves up a little bit. That's exactly what you need to do to that line. And now left-handed turn down this long final line. Oxer out of the corner, very wide with those avocado green colored poles. Does the seven, one vertical, oxer, one there. And then she steadies up in the nine to the Bainbridge at the final fence, but uh, gets us started a little bit over that time allowed as well. Yeah, a little bit steady there towards the close. Total of uh, 20 jumping, two time for uh, our first away there for Rally Hyler and uh, for Lennox van der Bissiop, just one of the rails that they had down and back to this fidelity. Uh, vertical over the water. Again, just seemed to be keep traveling through a couple of those. Yeah, just looked like had a couple of front poles of the Oxers. And again, it's big jumping out there today, and she has a big, big horse with a big stride, and uh, you know, just not able to give the horse quite enough space at some of those Oxers to get across, get in, away from that front pole. Sarah Siegel now, and actually has been uh, placed in a couple of our uh, four-star Grand Prix so far this season. Actually also just uh, back from uh, having competed the uh, World Cups last week in uh, Ocala. Uh, so live out from that point of view, but uh, off the turf and back in the arena here with uh, Speedy Jump. Speedy Jump is now the 40-year-old uh, by Staccato Gold. And uh, for the horse that she basically, this, this one that she goes to in the, the majority of the big classes from that point of view. Exactly. And let's see how this pans out for them. Does he say a little bit of curve down to this Barn Walker's Oxer from that there at three. Nice uh, in the six again. Right to the base of the wall. Gets a good shot there on the eight. Steadies up. Kind of slinks over that, but gets it done. And again, those are full up to height verticals at one meter sixty. Five, a little bit loose coming in here. Horse really jumped around a well, but then catches up a little bit at b. Has the vertical down coming out. Just looked like she was slightly loose in the connection as she took off. It really jumped around a well. Yeah, and that I mean, it's seven meters ninety three. There, it might just start to squeeze up a little bit tight for one or two. Yeah, exactly. Kind of loosen the five and then shorten the one. And then has the delicate white plank down. Again, the, the plank is very tall. It's one of the tallest obstacles out there today. And uh, Yeah, full up 160 yeah, for that. Bainbridge yeah, exactly. fence to complete there. Gets and, over the last nice. And uh, from that point of view, that's also 170 spread on the last. 153 in height at fence 14 to complete. Uh, 12 jumping, uh, four for time. Total of 16 there for uh, Sarah Seagull and uh, Speedy Jump in the early stages. You said just started to feel like they ran out of space there. Yeah, look, and you can see that on the replay there, just a little bit of a twist as he jumped B. And then here's the plank again. Jumped it well in front, but then just kind of clips it behind and then jumps out of that three stride line well. Like we said, the plank at number 10 is one of the tallest obstacles on the course at exactly one meter 60. Karen Pole now and uh, Karen with uh, Jet Run by Chaco Blue. Karen who's competed right the way through to the World Championships, former winner of the uh, Hampton Classic as well and uh, really been getting back into the game this season too. And uh, now on this 14-year-old uh, Although, yeah, riding under the flag of Japan, 
here from uh, New York direction. Yeah, this horse actually jumped a good round in the qualifier the other day and mm -hmm. then just looked like he kind of froze up around one corner. And I know uh, she's been just trying to work through that a bit with him, but such a beautiful jumper. He'd been out for a while and he's now back jumping at this level and super talented horse. And there, just looked like he spooked a little yeah. bit at one and then jumped up real high and hung up a little bit. And then she really gets to the base here. She's going to have to just keep the support going. You can see how careful he is now, just kind of holding himself over the jumps. And again, jumps up real high there. Great effort on his part. And she is going to look no. like, yeah, I think she was sort of second guessing. Do I keep going? Do I not keep going? And then didn't quite commit to that triple bar. Sometimes when the horses start and hesitate, especially like he did over number one, it's a matter of just deciding, like, mm, do we kind of keep going and keep the, the support and see if we can build confidence or does continuing actually take away more confidence? She does a great job, actually, to make a circle, reorganize herself, and then put the leg on, get that done. Has that. I think she's just now trying to give a little bit extra support. It's actually jumping well, just... Yeah, and, it yeah, looks and then like, she yeah. says, okay. But yeah, exactly as you say, go and jump a few fences, get a bit of drive going there, get the confidence back. Yeah. Go, okay, uh, that's it. We've done enough. But to, having had the circle, it was like, okay, well, yeah. we, we've got two choices at this point and, and probably the right choice there to just jump a few more. Yeah, exactly. It's always a fine line, right? Like sometimes you, you, you run that risk. If you keep going, you think, all right, they're going to get more and more scared. And sometimes they actually grow in the confidence if yeah. you can get a couple of good jumps. And I think she was smart to keep going for a little bit, but then jump through the double and thought, you know what, I think, I think that's enough. Eugenio Garza now, Mexico, El Milagros, uh, Chaloris P.S., the 10-year-old stallion by uh, Chaco Blue, and along the line of uh, Balobé de Roy on the dam side as well. Really nice-looking horse that he jumped in the Nations Cup here a few weeks ago as well, being a, a good step up to uh, Contago, of course, his top ride as well. And uh, this is one that's just going to keep developing. It's going to be really interesting to see as this one's coming to its 10th year this year, and, and this is where it needs to be now, stepping into these four-star Grand Prix plus. Yeah, absolutely. Moves up a bit. This horse, a little bit spooky at times, just holding himself. So Eugenio just making sure to kind of give a little bit extra support, get up there. Then holds up a little bit to the wall. Yeah, you can see just a little bit shifty, just looking, where's he at? Looking at the Liverpool maybe. And Eugenio just kind of keeping him between leg and hand. Whoa, whoa, keep going. And then, Whoa, keep going. No. Oh. No, unfortunately, it got loose there and it just yeah. bounced him out, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunate because actually it just looked like he kind of stuttered a, a bit. Yeah. He kind of hit the ground and just was like, ooh, ooh. And then he had to really add leg to get into the double and that just jumped him loose. And then the horse was doing a good job to, to do his job and just jump out of the double. And that just knocked him a little bit more loose. But he's up and everybody's okay. Absolutely. All all right. Unfortunately for you, Henio. And so we've seen many good rounds with that combination so far. That's just a little blip on the way. And uh, they'll be back to just build a little bit of confidence back, I'm sure. So they are up and out. And everybody is... A-okay. A-okay. Time's ticking away, as we can see from the Rolex clock there, just uh, just coming up to 10 past uh, one, our local time here, and we just see heading out there on foot for Eugenio Garza. I say both horse and rider absolutely fine, but and just unfortunately uh, didn't want to fish together. <laughs> so uh, we are on to our next now, and it's Vasco Flores. Vasco with Anton Morano's uh, Cosmona, the uh, Dutch bred mare by uh, Cosmia. Horse that he actually rode at the uh, Pan American Games as well. Great experience for them there, competing down in uh, Santiago from that point of view. And again, it's just kept them moving up to a new level for them, which is great. Yeah, absolutely. Good performance down in Santiago. And now just coming along this season, jumping this four-star. They had a good week. They had a pretty good week here so far. And let's see what he can do. So no clears, obviously, so far. And it's some big jumping out there today. Yeah. So it's really significantly larger than we'd seen the rest of the week. Um, I thought the WEF Challenge Cup was fair and nice. You know, we saw quite a few clear. And I think maybe Andy Christensen not wanting that many clear in today's jump off. But this is certainly a step up. 
And again, meter uh, four star Grand Prix are spec at meter 55. So, uh, and they have a bit of a five way centimeter leeway. Right, so we're actually one, we're yeah. 160 actually with this, this four star Grand Prix because yeah, then okay. they could just move up a little bit from yeah, that. Exactly. But yes, but basically we're in that. That category, whoops, there we go, good recovery. Yeah, very good recovery, actually. Good job to kind of get over that and just not um, get nervous about it and kind of just say, all right, we're getting there, not perfect. Let me just sit still, let the horse try to do his job, and he does. Just a little bit of trouble at the triple bar. Having B come down there, again, they all seem to be getting over A okay, but B causing a little bit more trouble. Nice shot here, moves up a little bit in the three, but does have that back pull. It is right deep into the corner, easy for the horses to either think about the turn on the landing side or just cut down a little bit and yeah. looking like he is calling it a day after having a few days. And again, similar to that of Karen Pole, just deciding that actually I, we need to get a few more fences underneath each other rather than just saying, walking out the door and saying we're not done yet. And actually finished quite nicely there for where they got to. But yeah, yeah. exactly. A little bit, a couple of, a couple of fences to get the confidence back for the uh, combination there for Cosmona and uh, Vasco Flores. And uh, we'll move on to our next now, which is Nina Malave, 24 years of age, also from France, uh, for the Rain family. And uh, pairing that started off the season really well. They were top three into that NetJets Grand Prix with behind uh, Tiffany Foster on that occasion. And she's also been into the uh, U25s as well. And, and should have given her a good base here to really just get that consistent competition coming for her uh, week after week. So it'll be interesting to see how they fare here today. Yeah, she, uh, like you said, had a really strong start to the season. This horse, really scopy, very careful animal. Beautiful jump there. Gets a great shot there. There she kind of landed, waited in the line, and then she could add a little bit of leg up in the six. Got a beautiful jump. Jumps the wall well. Right to the base of the triple bar. Little bit of a shift there, but that was kind of an athletic move. He did that in order to help himself get out of the way. Sign of a careful horse just saying, I need to shift my body a little bit this way or that way to make sure I get over it. Beautiful through there. Shifts a little bit to the right coming out of the double, but that works out fine. She's thinking about her time allowed, just stays neat back to the Hermes. Now she steadies up here. Great shot. Move up there. This is a beautiful round so far, but still a lot of jumping to be done down this last line. Takes the first one out of the corner to that oxer. Gets through the triple well. One left to go. She's on the edge with the I'm clock. I'm going to say she's close time, very close on time, and might not just be enough. Yeah, uh, 80.19, in fact, further over it than I thought. It's three time there for Nina Malave and uh, Cartier SR. Uh, hard to take away, though, from what has been a, a, a nice round, but, yeah, yeah, just not quite sharp enough. Yeah, I mean, I think she was thinking about the time allowed. You could tell she was quite neat after the teal double, and she was thinking about it. She did all the correct numbers and everything. But uh, time allowed is snug enough, and uh, I think it's actually it was a gorgeous round. I don't think yeah. she should be too upset with it. No, that. exactly. Uh, finishes with time there, three for time, and uh, best score at this stage for Nina Malave. And I think they've extended the time allowed. They have to 81. So actually, that comes out as a clear. Okay. There we look go. At that. There you go. So that was basically we saw six or so jump, but or five jump. And they uh, must have changed it a little bit earlier on. It just yeah. hadn't quite filtered through. But there we exactly. go. Uh, so uh, 81 time allowed, and uh, so she gets inside that. Um, so cool. there we go, Elena Haas and Claude. Uh, again, started well in the U25s earlier on this season. Had a very good run on the uh, field in the early um, shows back into. About 20 years ago, is <laughs> about <laughs> six or seven weeks ago. Yeah, it feels um, that way. From that, about that point of view. But she was great. Uh, she was clear last night as well. She was actually the first one to go clear in our meter 50 classic finale last night. And that was a beautiful round that she had. But uh, just having the top pole of the offset Liverpool just now. But in general, Elena's had a tremendous season, made huge strides, and just been consistent and really performing well at the highest yeah. level. I'm just going to clarify the time there. It was 81, but that was the first 
the third round we'd actually seen completed. So that's, that's why the what, time yeah. allowed played was changed after what felt like a few horses. But I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking we. I'm going to be. I'm going to say I didn't do rules. It's fine. <laughs> All right. I'm qualified to do it. Unfortunately. <laughs> Just making them up. I like it. A little bit of a touch coming in there at A, but just a light rub so it stays up. And again, gets over the last. Another super solid round out of Elena Haas. Yeah, nicely done. Finishes just on the uh, four faults for Elena Haas and uh, Claude this time. So just on that one down for them. And uh, so 70, 78, 66. Uh, would have just been over that existing pre-time allowed as well. So let's say that was extended up to yeah. 81. Here we see at the plank. Sits up nicely. Jumps out well. Very yeah. scopy horse. Jumps easy. And uh, it was a beautiful round. Like I said, she's been getting more and more consistent yeah. all season. Stella Wasserman now and uh, Stella from uh, California with uh, Play, former ride of uh, Jessica Mendoza from that point of view. And she's another rider that's been getting more uh, outings this season on this uh, Luadam side ride. Again, similar to that um, younger rider coming through. This is where these weeks have been a good opportunity as well. And we've had that a little bit of a hiatus, really, because we then had that run, run of sort of big five-star shows, Nations yeah. Cups, etc. whereas some of these riders we saw in the early weeks here in Wellington. Exactly. I think they jumped early, and then they kind of paused, skipped out on the big, big five-stars, and then, ooh, she was really had a lot of speed in that four-stride. But, yeah, I think skipped out and now aiming for these past two weeks of four-stars. So we're seeing a lot of the younger ones come on up and jump. Again, this horse, she hasn't had too long. She got it from Jess Mendoza. She has B coming out of that double. She's carrying quite a lot of pace on play today. Just trying to contain that energy. Very scopy horse. Nice. I actually thought she had nice space there from the angle we or sitting at it looked like she actually had plenty of space there, but he just kind of had it on the way up. And then C coming down as well as the front pull of B. Gets over the last, but we'll pick up a few around the course. Yeah, finishing on a score of 16 at uh, 77, 36, 16 there for uh, Stella Wasserman's time and a say newer combination with uh, play for the young US rider here through the teal double. And yeah. just, again, just starts to feel a little bit boxed in there. Yeah, I think a little bit short, and I think they're all just kind of, all just kind of shifting right coming out there and uh, really anticipating the turn after it. And as they shift, it was a little bit of height in the body. Chad Dana now of uh, Lebanon and uh, Peter, S Peter Howard and Laurie Citroes, uh, Caro W. With the uh, team with Leslie Howard, and we've seen him win uh, several times this season. In fact, he kicked off the year uh, back into the start of January with the first Grand Prix win, then won in the uh, MS150 series into the qualifiers there. has had a really good run this year as uh, Wellington was starting to feel like we're looking back. I know. <laughs> it's been looking forward for a long time. Now we're into the looking back stage with just this and one more week to go. It's unbelievable. It starts and it's slow, <laughs> slow, slow, and then all of a sudden, whoa, it's the end. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy how that goes. But we've seen a lot of top sport all season long here. And it's nice to be able to follow these horses and their development and the riders and see how everybody's season kind of unfolds. Steady's up for the yeah. four. Good move there. Jad, of course, really handy about making sure to get that done. A little last adjustment. Little leg, a little hand, just trying to shorten that stride, make it happen. Oh, could see shifted a little bit as he took off there. Jad trying to use his body to help, but... Not able to get up high enough. Takes his time a little bit here. I mean, he's not normally one to be slow, but he was a little bit patient around that turn. And then here, horse just jumping into the plank a little bit. Again, one of the tallest obstacles on the fence. Difficult white plank. Just delicate. If they just touch it, it sits in those flat cups. And if you just barely touch it, it's coming down. Nice ride through the triple. And gets over the last, but we'll pick up those two down on the course. Yeah, going to leave them on a score of uh, eight there into third so far at 79. Uh, 69 for Jad Dana and uh, Caro W from that point of view. Here we go back to the little horse yeah. sculpture. Yeah, there you can see just shifted a yeah. little bit. It got over it in front, but just didn't quite have the square push off behind. And then has the plank down in front. So 
So one down behind, one in front. Rupert uh, Karl Winkelmann now, the 31-year-old uh, German rider with uh, Calvados Sun, has been winner on the uh, Friday uh, Big Grand Prix qualifiers earlier on to the season as well for the uh, Eichendorf Horses of Germany. Again, with us uh, throughout uh, 2024 so far. And it, it's been a get, probably a good season for him as well to get, get some more mileage in. Absolutely. Jumped on a bunch of the five stars. He won one of the meter 50 speed. So uh, I think he's been having a really solid season all along. Beautiful jump there. Really nice ride there to the wall. And you can see the nice camera angle there to be able to see the real bend in the H strides to the base. Triple bar, of course, the way the line is set up, very typical line that we see, triple bar to an offset Liverpool vertical in the four strides. It is short, but the triple bar does help because they land a little bit shallow there. And uh, that helps you sort of set up immediately for that four strides. But of course, the triple bar being wide, you need a little bit extra pace to jump it so you have a little bit more speed. And it's just testing the rider's ability to keep the balance up. And there, back pull, back uh, end having the plank down. And I think everyone steadying up in the eight to that, but then anticipating the forward three stride a little bit early. And then having the ox are down after. Gets through the triple. Looks like he touched A, maybe. Good jump at the last. And, but we'll pick up those sort of two down in the middle of the course. He leaves him at 8, 79, uh, 39. Like we said, adjusted time of uh, 81 seconds. Coping with that, all right. And here, teal double. We'll tick at the box at that one. Yep. Got that one done. But two down on the, on the yeah. way. Yeah, here back to the Let's plank. Take a look at this. Good in front. Yeah. But you could see, it looked like he was maybe already thinking about, I need to move up for the three, and then the horse just get trailing that hind end a little bit and, as he jumped in. And half a horse is still behind you, is there? Yeah, exactly. You push the front end, and then you, <laughs> the hind end still got to come underneath. And it's right now for the Double Meadows Farm with uh, Knight is the uh, standing by Gilbert and uh, Reuter Schoff for uh, Anna. Anna also clear in our meter 50 classic last night. She had a beautiful round, but sitting on a different animal. Good ride here, uses her upper body to kind of help the front end. And there, again, a little bit the front end, you could see it, she was trying to help it at the wall and then it kind of catches up with her here at the Liverpool vertical. Horse just kind of jumped a little bit over that front end, didn't quite pull those front legs up towards the shoulder. And then as the back pull, that was kind of a late rail that she had there, maybe thinking about balancing up. And it's set, the way that teal double is set, it's almost like a little bit on the pitch down. Yeah. So you feel like you're kind of going downhill as you take off there. And again, that's the course designers. It's it's done with in design. You know, he, he knows where he's setting the jumps and encourages the horses to kind of get the balance a little bit low. That's why that back pole comes down. It's either the back pole or the vertical where the balance kind of catches up. Beautifully ridden through the triple. That was absolutely really well done. Steadies up to the last and then helps the front end to get across. But uh, a little bit slow as well. Yeah, a little bit steady. It's two time as well to add that eight jumping two time. 82-8-0 for Anna Dryden and uh, Knight this time. Here at the Fidelity again just starts to run out of space there. And uh, then here are the teal double, all right. Little ping through there, but as yeah. you say, just cuts down early on it. Yeah, exactly. Not not a, a, a bad fault no. by any means, just kind of a light touch as she jumps in. Todd Minicus now, and uh, Todd with uh, Kiko Spirits for the Spirit Group. Again, started the season really well. Uh, put a WEF Challenge Cup win behind them there as well, going back on this uh, nine-year-old by uh, Darius. And again, a little bit of a breather, and now back into back into action into these weeks as well. Exactly, had a breather because Todd was injured. Yes. That's unfortunate, but he is back at it right now. Saw him jump last night as well, and uh, I think this is a very talented horse, just nine years of age. And again, this is a big ask of a nine-year-old to jump the four-star Grand Prix here, especially I think today is built to the maximum of the specs. Oof. Jumps up real high and then just comes down a little bit shallow on the back. A little bit of a green mistake from the horse. 
know, you can't fault it for wanting to jump And that's high. the thing, the, 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 fen the rounds that he's jumped so far this year, they've had some really good rounds, then just a couple that yet have been a little bit green from the horse coming into this level. Yes, exactly. Not so unexpected to see. And uh, again, I, I think this is really a talented animal. It yeah. just, needs, uh, just needs a little bit of time at this level to kind of get to know exactly how much he needs to push. Does he need a little bit more across? He keeps going up because he's very careful and he wants to jump up high. And he just needs to learn to follow through the back end a tiny bit more. But for sure, Todd will figure that out with him. Gets right to the base of that, but jumps out well. Gets over the delicate plank, moves up. Again, we just have the one clear at the moment. So a four-fault round, as long as he's neat enough, could stay up in the placings. But we, of course, have lots of jumping left to do. A little nice. bit steady in there. Yeah, just came in a little bit deep and a little bit steady, and the horse just jumped a little bit low behind. Overall, though, it is going to be a score of uh, eight plus one times, nine overall, and uh, for uh, Kikiko with Spirit and Todd Manikas. But again, I don't think he's going to be too pleased with how that's panned out this season so far. No, I think uh, the horse really gets great experience, and uh, I think that's a real horse for Todd to have in the future. So nine years old, already showing that he's fully capable of doing yeah. this level. A little, little frustrating when you have the first, but again, that again is less of a worry, if you like, because it's not one of the real technical parts. It's, well, okay, that happened. Let's move on from exactly. that. Exactly. Exactly. If anything, sometimes you have the first jump down. It takes a little bit of the tension out of the body, and yeah. then they can jump a nice round after. Brianga Tarmato now, the SNL Farms, SNL Marlon van der Heffink for the uh, Belgian bread. Uh, now, 12-year-old by uh, Desir de Chateau for uh, Brianne. Now let's see what she can execute today neatly and elegantly over the first. Looking to join that clear so far of uh, Nina Malave of France. Moves up down to the uh, barn walkers fence without too much trouble. Again, just, you know, nice control down there. The wall. Looks good at the wall. Steadies up. This horse was a little bit late kind of developing up to this level and uh, I know Brian really believes in this one and it's looking like he's really figuring out this level at this point beautiful ride there you could see she did such a great job to keep the horse very straight we've seen that come down a lot because the horses are really shifting to the right and if you watched Brian do it she was smack in the middle of those teal poles which is exactly why I jumped it so well also beautiful hair she looks like she's thinking about the time allowed. Yeah. She's nicely on the inside track here. Oh, just took the first one out of the corner. Just pushing that front pole out of the way. And then here again, just getting a little, from maybe from some inexperience, just having the back pole of B as well. 76-21 as a time. Five for time, as you say, moved on nicely, but uh, two down there. Eight faults for Brianne Gautelmato and uh, SNL. Uh, Marlon van der Heffink. She had a beautiful round, actually. Yeah. Just kind of looked like stamina at the end and uh, got caught up out of that turn to the avocado green oxer. And then she had to move up to that, and then it kind of screwed up the rest of the line because she really had to push him forward a little bit out of the rest of the rhythm from the rest of the course. Otherwise, it was a beautiful round. Thanks, Robin. Now of Australia, Michael and Wendy Smith's uh, high star hero for the uh, gelding that is uh, 11 years of age now for her. And again, has looked impressive last year and this with the Australian rider. She jumped on the Nations Cup a few weeks ago as well. Two very good horses to go to now for uh, the former Australian World Cup winner. This is such a scopey horse. And she's been having better and better yeah. rounds with him. Really solid. I think everyone always really impressed because it's such a powerful jumper. Huge jump there at the wall. Have to steady up here. <laughs> she Actually got, the, she got it back well. Yeah, she yeah. did get it back. Sometimes he's not always uh, perfect at those Liverpools, and I think she it was a little bit deep, but he sort of challenged him a little bit, and I think it actually that kind of helped. Helped hold him off it a little bit. He was thinking, whoa, we're getting close. i got to really pay attention, and that helped uh, generate a good jump and a good effort. Nice shot here. Oh, 
Jumps up around it yeah. in front well, but then just ticking it behind. And there, just a little bit past the arc in the jump. The horse kind of took off, and then the midpoint of the jump was a little bit past the center mark of it, and that's why he trails the hind end a little bit. But gets over the last, put a couple down. There's a couple down. It's eight faults at 79. Uh, 3-2 there for uh, Tyser Owen and High Star Hero. But uh, overall, let's take a look back at the plank here at the uh, tangerine yeah, fence. Yeah, jumps, jumps it well in front. Yeah. Maybe she had a little bit too much speed. Maybe she needed to be a little bit more on the hawks and take her time, just really jump the plank and then worry about moving up. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he could help her out, I think, a little bit there as well. Jordan Coyle and the uh, Falkirk Farms uh, four goals. And, uh, well, as you said, big night last night. Absolutely. They were unbelievable last night. He's jumping them again today. Her, her, him. <laughs> uh, today. And, uh, but, wow, was that an impressive performance last night. He was so fast in the jump off. Lightning and well deserving of that win. I really like this horse. He's already won a Challenge Cup on this one. Yeah. He did well in, uh, I think he won a meter 50 earlier he in did. the season. He, he's yeah. won a lot on this horse, and it's just been a super mound. He jumped the first five star clear on him. I mean, this horse just fast, careful, and really suits Jordan's style. Yeah, that first five star in Irish, one, two, three um, on the podium from that point of view. But as you say, they've really got going together. But interesting that he's he's gone back to for gold th today. Yeah, exactly. Won the class last night. And uh, I have a feeling this might be the sort of finale for this horse for the season. Yeah. So we figured, all right, we're entered in this, you know, $200,000 class. Last night was 150000 He's just trying to get some prize money before the season well, ends. And, and, and the reality is, as you know, having done it, there are some horses that actually thrive on the fact of keeping going. Yes. And some that say, I want to do something, and then I want a few days off, and then I want to, you know, you, your horses for courses. Yeah, exactly. And everybody knows their horse the best. And, uh, you know, Jordan obviously making this, the team decision to say, all right, you know what, the horse feels great. And he seems in form. And sometimes, like you said, horses sometimes need to be in a rhythm. It can't just yeah. be save, save, save. Sometimes the horses need to keep jumping a little bit. And when they're on fire and they're really doing well and they have the confidence, you might as well utilize it. I think that's an important uh, thing that a lot of people overlook. And they think we got to just save and save. And sometimes when they feel good, yeah. you've got to keep going. Unfortunately, just catching up with him here at A and B. Was just a little bit quick coming in and just jumped a little bit belly low across A and B. Yep, 78 seconds the time. Unfortunately, it won't be a double up with last night's win, but it's still not a bad week for Jordan Coyle and for Gold. Finishing on two down there, both coming in the combination uh, at the eight falls. Yeah, just comes there a little bit on the angle and then just gets flat through here, as you say, yeah. just not making high to that stage. Yeah, exactly. Got there and was just a little bit right to left as he kind of took off. And uh, just jumped a little bit straight through the body and a little bit low through the legs. Alex Matz now and uh, Illuminati MBF for uh, Alex, for uh, Adele uh, Dil Schneider Racing Stables. Of course, the family with links into racing as well. Father well, was a top trainer in both. Uh, racing and, of course, as a rider in jumping too. Yeah. Now, a again, for him, a top five in that uh, World Cup in Ocala last week as well. That was with uh, Cashew CR. Again, he's he's had a few different horses to go to this season and just starting to get some some real mileage on them as well, which is nice, including this 11-year-old. Yeah. Oh, unfortunately, the uh, I think front pole may be coming down of that. Just look like maybe got up that six a little early. Steadies up nicely there. Used his hands and body to just kind of help hold the horse, let it jump around the Liverpool. But again, just with the one clear so far, definitely uh, four faults. Mm, unfortunately, it's happened yeah. as well. But like you said, just that loose five into the sort of short one and the balance as it tips down the hill a little bit. The horse is just not able to get over B well. We'll want to just keep it organized. Oh, has the front pole there. Also, we've actually seen that front pole come down a bit. You know, it's kind of a long rollback turn around there to 
and those green poles, it's a wide oxer, so you need a little bit of pace, but then you can kind of take that first distance, and that comes down and picks up B of the triple as well. Total of 16 there, 79, uh, 76 this time for uh, Alex Matz and uh, Illuminati. Uh, MBF, yep, just that front rail front early ball. on. Yeah, it just looked like he had a little bit of speed and then kind of ended up a little bit closer than he anticipated. And then here, let's see, jumps through this. And the uh, horse was still, you could see the legs were a bit uneven as he took off. The horse just didn't have time to get both legs kind of out of the way. And uh, one of them was a little bit lagging and picking it up, and that's where it came down. Eduardo Menezes now of uh, Brazil, the H5 Sport Horses, H5 uh, Castel Memo. Uh, this one a little bit more experienced at 14 years of age. Uh, but again, really for him, it's um, been a, a group of horses to be moving up into the five stars. We haven't seen so much of him in the, in the bigger classes, but he's got a really nice string around from the H5 team and the, the Hank family there. Yeah, exactly. And I want to say this one maybe he told me was on a slight break, and he's now yeah. just coming back up to this. Level, but Eduardo just bringing some up. But his student, of course, Carlos Hankerero, having a super season so far, was a runner up in the qualifier for this class. So, overall, H5 team having a good season. And that's the thing, you start to sort of get the, the marks in the calendar, don't you, when you're, you're then starting to think, okay, we might, like a horse like this, we're starting to bring it back out thinking about the summer. Yeah, exactly. Thinking about getting in spring and summer, we'll start doing some early four stars, etc. Yeah, exactly. We see, we're seeing this horse more now in the later part of the season. It wasn't so much in the early part of the season. And, uh, you know, we were talking, Brian and I were talking a little bit last night that horse sport these days doesn't really have a season, right? You get 52 weeks and... Uh, 51 of them are full. <laughs> yeah, 51 of them are full. And basically, you know, you just have to cycle through of like what what parts of the year do you want to peak and which ones do you use as a break? It's not so much a seasonal thing anymore. It's much more about, you know, it's pick your own line, and, and pick that your will own season. And that will apply to each horse. That's not just a case of Absolutely. saying that's what a what a barn's going to do. You know, those all those horses will go that way. It's like this one will be aimed like this is. Yeah, towards uh, the later part yeah. of this season and then maybe more towards the summer. On eight at the moment, Fred Wado and H5 uh, Castel Memo. Uh, goes around for the uh, eight faults there at 79 to six. And uh, unfortunately leaves him on the eight faults this time. Yeah, just having yeah. the front pole there. Again, you know, I mean, that double, when I walked it, I immediately thought, ooh, this is going to be a trouble spot for the horses. We don't see the horses jump the teal doubles well. And an ox are vertical off of a loose line where they have to jump a delicate skinny coming in just encourages a little bit of that looseness and then you lose the balance coming into the double and it just makes it hard to jump. And he's soaking for the High Hopes Farm of uh, North Carolina now. This is uh, Forestal uh, by Don Diorado. We've seen it with Galvira and uh, several others. Now, again, in the last couple of weeks, this one's had a bit more um, ring time. A little more action. Yeah. Exactly. Elise had a, a quieter start to the season because she was over in Abu Dhabi for the U.S. team. And, uh, and now I've been showing how much heavier through this second part and has a couple of really nice horses working with Marcus and Meredith Bierbaum. And she's been really shining these last couple of weeks. Jumped that five star, I think, clear with the time fault and she's having really good results. Nice shot here. One of the nicest things about Elisa's riding is she's small. She's she's not a very tall girl, and uh, she's nice and light up there. But she's very secure in her position and the tack. She keeps a nice short rein length, and uh, she's very simple. Everything she does is quite simple up there. Unfortunately, just had a lot of speed kind of as she took off, and the horse just jumped real forward across that vertical. Just didn't kind of set itself and jump up and around it, and there. C and B come down again as the balance gets thrown off through the big oxer coming into that double. And the plank as yeah. well. And then she's off to the left corner here at that oxer. So just having a little bit of trouble today. Yeah, jumped Sh shifting a bit to the left mm. as well. Jumps through it, but just shifting, and I think that shift all the whole class actually has caught her a bit. 
as he jumps to the left corner, it makes it harder for you to leave the jump zone. It's on 12 this time, 78-78 for Lee Soken and uh, Farah Stahl from that point of view, but uh, has also been a combination that, you know, that's not usually they score. It did come up a little bit earlier on this season in the four-star Grand Prix. Then they've had some nice five-star um, shoulder classes to compete in. Again, it's just generally been clears and fours, so just really coming back into that yeah, exactly. as well. Exactly. But yeah, and again, as you like say, said, just got out of their rhythm a bit part yeah. way through. Yeah, and, and, you know, this is a big class. This is a big jumping to be done. I mean, it's four stars, you know, a lot of money on the line, $200,000 class, and uh, it's been a long season. It has. Uh, Zoe Conte and so uh, the uh, Stepex tables, Enrico de la Pomme, like you say, they're starting to bring some, uh, move up some of the horses as well. Enrico by uh, Vigo de Sue is the 10-year-old uh, for uh, Zoe here. I get very interested to see, as I say, she also is another one that's been getting into the rhythm in the last few weeks as well. And you say that just those early weeks, you, you don't want to go and o overplay your hand. Yeah, exactly. you gotta you got to ease in. And, you know, it's not only just about mapping out your entire year. It's about mapping out this season here in Wellington. It's very easy to want to overjump the horses because you're here and you think, all right, we're here. They feel good. Let's just do it. But it's a lot of courses, you know, and I had a long chat actually with Lily Keenan the other day about how important it is to sort of pick and choose and even though you're the human desire is to want to jump a lot you need to make sure that you plan well with each animal exactly and it's interesting talking to a couple of other riders that go down the line of uh, also they feel some of the europeans you know if they when they've been competing here they actually arrive into the european spring summer circuit ready and running yeah which is actually a good thing for them from yeah, that exactly. point of view you got to remember in europe so many people are just jumping indoors still. Yeah. And uh, only April 1st does it really start the outdoor season. So, and a lot of people even take a pause during the cold winter months and don't show so much. So it's a big advantage when they're down here and they're really getting going where the shows kind of come April, May, where other people in Europe are just getting started. The people who come from here back over to Europe and they are up and they are running and they're already in a groove. And it gives them a big advantage to the early part of the summer season in Europe. On eight of the main four, as they can say, Enrico. De La Pomme, big jump over the last sales, that, and uh, 77.92, just uh, going to be eight faults there. Goes into fourth, actually, at the moment on the eight. Let's give you a reminder of how those scores look at the moment. We've got one clear with Nina Malave and uh, Cartier SR. And just there, yeah, sorry, there, go on. it just looked like she, uh, the horse kind of just sort of didn't finish the stride as it took off at the Liverpool and then having A down of the difficult double. Sorry, didn't uh, mean to No, no, off. no, I will I will recommence, but you were absolutely right. Nina Malafe and uh, Cartier Sal with the early clear. Elena Haas in second at the moment, only one on four faults at this stage yeah. with Claude. Uh, Brian Gattal, Zoe Kant, uh, Jordan Coyle, list those on eight faults. And I'll remind you too, we're also again reverse order of qualifying. Yes. Um, so a second half is going to come up with those that are stronger in the qualifying. And we're getting stronger all the time because we're going to Margie Goldstein Engel now and uh, the lovely Jack of Hearts for this uh, Danish bread horse by um, heartbeat for the Gladewinds farm coming to the almost closing stage of if you like part one yep and she's uh, this horse has been jumping so well all season long Margie's been up in the ribbons in so many classes a lot of speed there just a light touch on the top pole luckily it stays up she's a little bit wider here in her turn but this horse has quite a quick foot speed and I don't normally think of Margie as someone with time faults but she was a little bit wider on her track back to that line. But this horse, such a lovely animal. Pats the ground nicely. Great uphill balance. Has the blood. And wants to be super athletic. Clearly can jump easy. It just looks like a super fun animal to ride. <laughs> right? It just, yeah. It's just so pleasant looking. Yeah, exactly. You're, you know, that balance is that head and neck are right up out in front of you. Has a good gallop. Blood takes her to the jumps. Tries to leave the jumps up. I mean, it's athletic. Last jump. Do we get a jump off? Yes, or do we, we get a, yes, we do. do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Uh, 78 98. So it is the second of the clear for Margie Goldstein Engel and uh, Jack of Hearts, the, the Labrador of horses. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> so, two uh, so far, looking good. Yeah, like I said, I mean, that, that horse has been jumping great all season long. Margie's been consistently in the ribbons with this horse, and uh, great to see him jump so beautifully and uh, give us an assured jump off. Absolutely. So uh, just one more to come in this uh, first half of the class for this uh, IDA development uh, four-star Grand Prix. Uh, and it's going to be Carl Cook. Carl with uh, Helen Sidney Osby's uh, Caracol del Rock. 
uh, the French bred mare by Zandor that many are probably familiar with by now. Uh, it's been his ride for uh, many big Grand Prix so far. And of course, with this and Kalinka, he's been certainly uh, picking up some big uh, wins, notably last season, just tailing it off with the win in the Coachella Cup for the Million Dollar Cross there Certainly. as well. That was with Kalinka from that point of view. But th these two have been working well together. Yeah, I mean, this has been a super partnership right from day one. Went to the Pan Ams on this horse and won already multiple five stars, I think, at least one or two. And, I mean... Uh, it's a lot of blood, this horse. Former rider Julian at Bayard, but Carl took over the reins, and they just clicked instantly. And uh, it's just such a talented animal. So, oh, I was going to say so careful. Just looked like she shifted a little bit as she took off there. A little bit kind of took off in the middle and then shifted slightly to the right as she jumped that. And then has a huge stride, really covers that. You know, and uh, when we walked the course, Carl was already thinking with that four-stride line, it's going to get real short for me. And it did, and as she sh kind of shifted, just got a little too close. Gets over the plank. Again, this is really a talented animal. And Carl, Carl's riding just really suits the mare. Uh, but again, a little bit of what we were talking about earlier. I mean, they haven't done a lot no, this they year have so not far. Been, no, they have been a partnership for maybe about a year now. Yeah. But uh, they probably haven't jumped that many classes. And, and coming into this season, they did a little bit in California. They jumped on the Nations Cup. Yeah. They've then had a quiet time since then. So they're just going to finish on the four there. I don't know how much of that is the view of also looking ahead to next week as well with, yeah. the, with the Grand Prix and so forth, which way he'll go. Exactly. Um, who knows? But as yeah. you say, just starts just to get... Just a slight shift. Yeah. yeah. He was worried about that. I mean, the mare has a huge stride and uh, she really covered the ground well in that four just too well and then just a tiny bit of a shift as she took off and too much has that down well takes us through our first half of this two hundred thousand dollar ida development grand prix here uh, this afternoon a little bit of breeze as you can see from the canadian flag is just making things uh, nice and pleasant palm beach style uh, down here and uh, we're going to be heading into that break thanks to uh, our partners here with the uh, development and of course bar walkers as well uh, through this class two a uh, thanks to them and their continued support here at the winter equestrian festival and i say if you're uh, on site you can also visit them uh, here on site as well down near the mcgarver in the international arena uh, our arena team are going to head on in and we'll be back in around ooh, seven or eight minutes uh, with our first on course into the second half of this class. Two clears at the moment with Nina Malave and Margie Goldstein Engel. The cowboy hustle is physically demanding. No doubt you gotta be tough. But even more important is your mental fitness. Your brain has to be firing on all cylinders to perform, to be clear, to concentrate, and to focus. I'm a father, a cowboy, a businessman, and a musician, and so much more. I drink Brain Java House Brew, packed with the brain power blend of essential vitamins and minerals my brain needs every day to get it done. Low in natural sugar, low in calories, low in carbohydrates, and low in sodium. It's a great natural and healthy alternative to energy drinks. Brain job. Be mindful, be present, turn on your brain.
dedication. And commitment. As an athlete, you are at times in your own mind. You must have confidence for yourself and your horse. In equestrian sports, men and women compete equally. This mare has class. Introducing Tazara Classic T. Be mindful, be present, turn on your brain. Well, there you see the two clears so far for uh, a jump off. Uh, good way to go yet, uh, Nina Malave and uh, Margie Goldstein Engel. France and uh, USA so far in the mix. Second half coming up includes uh, Luciana Lossio, of course, our five star Grand Prix winner from uh, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, then from there, it's uh, Jessica Springsteen, Amanda Derbyshire, Eliza Lehrman, who's put some good rounds in so far. And uh, then, of course, we go in reverse order of qualifying from that uh, qualifier earlier on this week in that Adequan Weft Challenge Cup. Uh, Nal Nasser in that final few, Mario Delorier, uh, Kathleen Driscoll, Nick De La Joyo, uh, Pier Giorgio Bucci, Carlos San Guerrero, and finally Lily Kin. Still feels quite a few clears. Uh, hanging out there, waiting to come and join us uh, into the final jump off here. But two at the moment book their place and uh, we will see. So uh, that is all on its way. It's been a good first round so far. Um, very challenging, clearly. We saw only the two clear, but I have a feeling, uh, like we said, that, you know, the second half of the course, it's in reverse order of the qualifying. So I think we're going to see some stronger rounds coming up just because those horses are really peaking at the moment. Not that we saw weaker ones in the first half, but more clearly when they do it in reverse order from the qualifying, you know who's doing well and peaking this week. So that means that uh, we're going to see some stronger ones coming up in our second half, especially Chloe Reed's horse jumped beautifully. Niles on a horse that he's already won a class on. Kendra Brinkhope's been doing great on her horses, super solid. Lily, who won our Challenge Cup, I, I think we're going to see some good rounds. And, and up. she's been on hot form because she's been winning up in Terra Nova as well. Yeah, so exactly. She, <laughs> she won a two star last week as well. So uh, Jessica Springsteen also was clear. She's on a new one, but it's been jumping beautifully. Yeah. So we're going to see a lot of good ones, I think, coming up. And uh, hopefully it'll shape up to be a great jump off. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to that. Uh, back underway in a couple of moments time. Like I say, two clears at the moment with Margie and with uh, Nina. Our reading team just putting the finishing touches on. And uh, we'll be back underway into this uh, $200,000 Ida Development uh, four-star Grand Prix.
Well, it looks like our first just stand at the gate, just the tractors finishing off in the arena, and uh, then we'll be uh, underway with uh, Cat uh, Tyree Flores then to take us into the second half. There we go. Barrier goes up, and uh, in she comes with uh, Camilla Z, the uh, mayor by uh, Cliff 67. Second half, and just a reminder, those two clears at this point with uh, Nina Malafe and uh, Margie Goldstein Engel at this point. And uh, Danny alongside me, Danny Woolman. Danny, um, I think we're going to get a few more clears out of this yet. We've both discussed this. Yes, I think we're going to see actually quite a few more clears. Uh, those who are peaking this week are coming on up, and there's some really strong combinations. Starting out pretty early with Luciana Locio with our five-star winner from a couple of weeks back. So I think we're going to see some solid rounds. I don't know. What's your guess? Eight total? That's I was going to go in a similar direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, let's total. pitch there. Let's pitch, let's pitch our ten to date. Yes. What, what, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see what it is. So, Kat Tyree and uh, Camilla Z, really nice looking 12-year-old uh, for Kat. Could start us off with one of those as we go. Um, Danny, what have we gleaned about the course so far? The teal double has caught a bit of a uh, bit of uh, consternation there. Yeah. But, um, teal double, it, white plank, Liverpool vertical. Those have been the big challenging parts. Maybe be the triple as well. But let's see what Kat can do on Camilla. Ooh. Super hard rub there at number two. Luckily, that one kind of popped up out of the cups but landed right back in them without coming down. Here she steadies up a little bit, gets right to the Ooh, base. Ooh. Just gave the slide. It's still there. It's still on, so that doesn't count as a penalty, but it is hanging on the edge. She gets over the delicate vertical at the Liverpool. So she's holding on so far. Sits up nice here. Backs up good through the double. That horse really set herself to jump that well. All right. A little bit fussy with the head, but actually helped the balance. Cat does a good job to make sure that the horse takes her time to jump around that plank, even though she was kind of fighting her a little bit, shaking her head. She said, no, 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 you got to listen to me. It's, you're going you're gonna to clear it if you listen, and, and she did. Beautiful through the triple. One left to go, but she's a little bit on the edge of the time. Maybe she's going to make it. I think she's going to be okay. She's going to be looking good. Oh, look at that big smile. 80.84. There we go. Starts us off uh, nicely in and uh, gives us a clear straight off the bat. She was listening. There we go. Yeah, she uh, was. Cat Tyree Flores uh, goes clear with Camilla Z. Like I say, a really nice looking combination together. And uh, so off we run. Exactly. You know, statistically, we were talking about it last night. Statistically, first after that break, Higher chances of going clear than most of the other positions in the class. And uh, clearly it mattered. She had time to kind of watch, figure out what she needed to do with the course. She had fresh footing. A lot of factors play a role there, but clear to get this second half started. Uh, Lady Louise, you meant to go now for uh, Luciana Lossio. And if the name sounds familiar, it's because she won the five-star Grand Prix. We're here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, back onto week nine in superb style. Uh, back at it this week. Back at it. She was great in the challenge in the uh, challenge cup as well. And let's see what she can do. Everybody loves this combination. They know each other so well. Lady Louise, such a trier. And Luciana and her are just a perfect partnership. Beautiful jump here. Such a talented, sporty horse. Big jump here. She's going to have to really steady up. But that worked out well. Again, the horse has a really adjustable stride. So Luciana able to jump the big one at the triple bar and then get her back. And a big stride. So she steadies up here. A touch and the pole is shaking in the cups but stays up. Beautiful shot at the Hermes. Now she'll have to steady up, take her time. And unfortunately... She was still making that adjustment as she took off, and unfortunately, Plank coming down for our five-star winning pair. Gets over the triple, and I think she'll be frustrated enough with that one down, but uh, actually, really solid round. Yeah. Round. 
just leaves her on the four this time and uh, you can't say she hasn't had a bad season. She's been there or thereabouts. She was top three into the NetJets Grand Prix early on as well. Won the five-star Grand Prix. Just the plank here for yeah. them. Just that delicate yeah. plank. Been and a big troublesome spot for everybody. Absolutely. A lovely story of hers as well as uh, we interviewed her after that week as well. She has a full-time job, uh, very much a full-time job. She's been yeah. a judge, a, a, a highly successful lawyer as well. And as she said to us, well, I, I'm basically an amateur that competes yeah. at weekends, and that's it. So, you know, yeah. she's, she's, she's had an amazing season. It's an amazing season for that. So she's she's obviously well accomplished everything she turns her hand to. Well done. Uh, Gabriel de Manos Machado for the uh, Sweet Oak Farm with uh, Niles for the uh, Belgian Red Gelding. Uh, to go now and uh, again he's he's not been too far away this season as well just a few more um big classes with us she actually jumped into the five star grand prix back into early march as well and uh, from their point of view the, again they've just been finding their feet at that level yeah exactly been jumping a lot of these classes getting great experience all season long on a number of different horses and had some good results there you can see really thinking about i got to slow down on the four. Leans almost backwards, slows the horse down, but it works. You know, sometimes it doesn't have to look pretty. It just needs to get done. And Gabriel doing a good job in the four, but then unfortunately having the skinny down and uh, landing a little bit with the balance low through that double and having B like we've seen come down time and time again. Steady's up for the plank here. That he did very well. Keeps him straight there. Horse wanted to shift a little bit left, and he just keeps him straight through the three stride. And again, tries to get the balance back here. Wants to, oh, jumps up around A, B, and C well. That was well done. He was really took his time, let the horse jump the jumps. Jumps up at the last, but a few down. Well, finishing with uh, a jumping in one time total of 981.24 for uh, Gabriel de Manos Machado there and uh, Niles. Uh, so leaves them out of the equation this time. Just the uh, little skinny there coming down at the horse sculptures and then to this teal double. Little bounce in there. And uh, just unfortunately just not having enough bounce to make it out on the other side. To uh, Jessica Springsteen now and the Stonehill Farms that came in the Poto Z uh, for the gelding by uh, Callado for uh, Jessica. As you said, mentioned a little bit earlier on, newer ride for her in the uh, list season. It's going to be very yeah. interesting to see how they get on here because they've been just coming along nicely on this nine-year-old. This yeah, is this a step is, up. This is a step up. First four-star Grand Prix for Cayman and Jess. She had a gorgeous round uh, the other day on this horse. So I think he's set up beautifully for this. Just been getting more and more consistent. Very scopy horse, but of course green at this level. Beautiful jump there. She was clear, I think, maybe with a time fault the other day. And there, just had a lot of pace. I think she was just trying to be supportive. And uh, hind end actually overpowering the front end a little bit. Steadies up beautifully there. So unfortunately, block of the wall coming down. Jumps this well. Keeps him straight here to the double. Jumps through that really well. She did a good job, really, to think about the straightness and the balance. And again, this horse, very powerful, very strong hind end. Gets over the delicate plank. Jumps really easy. You can see you shorten the reins a little bit. Reorganize. Again, young horse. And jumping well. Let's see how he jumps at this triple. Come in. Yep. Yeah. I was just thinking the balance maybe was getting a little bit low. Front end getting a little bit insecure. Has the front, has the pole at A. But honestly, for the first yeah. four-star Grand Prix, I think very, very solid round. Those are easy things for Jess to go back and fix for the next time. But uh, that's going to be a super horse for her yeah, it in is. the future. Very scopy. Looking forward to seeing that one out over the uh, next year plus for uh, Jessica Springsteen. As you say, not quite to be today, but that's that's not a disappointment, particularly from that side of things. Yeah, they are just jumped a little bit at it, a little bit on the right to left angle coming in, but uh, super solid round. 
So on to Amanda Derbyshire and Cornwall BH at the other end of the scale here. Plenty of experience with this pair yeah. from that point of view and so it should give them a very good opportunity as part of the four star here this week. It, we get so used to five stars here. We start going, oh, four star, we've, we've gone down again. This is not, this, uh, this is a big Grand Prix, yeah, $200,000 exactly. Grand Prix. Exactly. There's a lot of money and it's a lot of big jumping. I mean, this is uh, a massive Grand Prix anywhere else in the world. You know, you get a little bit uh, numb here in Florida thinking five star, five star. And it goes back and forth, and then you think, oh, it's a four-star. It's so soft. But it's nope. not. Nothing nope. is soft here. Time allows are tight. Jumps are big. It's courses are technical. And uh, nothing's a gimme here in Wellington. And top competition. Slinks over that, but gets it. And she's staying neat here. This has been such a great partnership over the years. Just getting the reorganization. Gets right to the base of that. We're not seeing that jump come down. They're actually jumping that one very well. It's this plank that they are struggling with. And she made the adjustments, but unfortunately kind of got there. And the horse, as he jumped up, kind of jumped up and into that top plank. They don't see it well, and it's very delicate. So a light touch, and it's coming down. And jumps through the triple nicely. Keeps it active, a little bit on the outside line here to the last, but gets through it well within that time allowed. Yep, they do, and uh, so it is just on the four. Into sixth place so far from Amanda Derbyshire. Uh, 78 to 11 with Cornwall BH, as you say, the four-star, four, uh, Falters playing a big part in this four-star. Just again, the plank uh, takes them uh, out of the equation there from that point of view. Yeah. Plank yeah. is a hard jump to jump today. I thought also when I walked it, I thought, whoa, this is... A lot taller. It's very delicate with just those three plain, plain white planks and, uh, into the three stride line, which is forward. People riders anticipating it a little bit as well. Eliza Lemon now, and uh, this is the Five Way Farm Zaluna CLZ, the uh, mare by uh, Emerald. And, and actually, going back a few weeks, had a really good run with this horse. They actually finished si sixth in the WEF Challenge Cut back onto week seven. That's a five star week. They were top five in the two star Grand Prix as well. Uh, top 10 in the qualifiers back into December this year, last year as well. They, they haven't done so many of the bigger classes, but what they have done, they've done very solidly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think they've done really well and she was clear in the challenge cup on thursday elected not to jump off to maybe save for today's class and uh, i think eliza knows that aluna is capable of jumping this class clear and uh, we'll see if her strategy paid off but this is such a nice horse compact head to tail nice balance and clearly a very successful animal Beautiful shot there at number three. Really nice there. Again, this horse by Emerald and looks very much like his father, her father. Unfortunately, having the back pull of the triple bar. We actually have not seen, we've seen a couple of times that that's come down, but not that much. And uh, just jumped up nicely, but just didn't get across the width of it. Maybe just underestimated a little bit how wide it's riding. Here, Eliza, just trying to get the control back as Aluna gets a little bit stronger going through the course, really taking her to the jumps. Big ride there. And then steadies up here, has a lot of pace coming into this but very clever animal to get over those poles. Looks really good. Nice to the last. What an unfortunate early fall to have at that triple bar. Not one we've seen come down a lot because that was really a nice round, although she is a little bit slow and does pick up a time fault as well. Here, let's watch it again. Yeah, maybe she was a little bit far off it when she took off. Hard to tell from this angle, but uh, she just has the back pole down. Not getting across. Michaela Langmeyer now to go next, and so uh, this for the 23-year-old, uh, and so uh, this is uh, Giselle NS for uh, Michaela. Again, we've seen her into a few more of the bigger Grand Prix this season from that point of view. 
And uh, again, this should be a, a good one for her. Again, she's going to be in the category of riders. This is probably going to be the last week taking a spin at these big classes. But bearing in mind for many, OK, next week's a five star. Uh, we have spring series then with three stars, etc. out on the field. Exactly. Go back out on the field for week. I guess you could call it. Oh, no, let's 14, not, 13, no, no, spring. 14. It's separate shows, separate shows, separate shows. <laughs> feels like it just keeps going but actually it's such a nice change of pace they've been in the international ring now for a number of weeks in a row and they will head out back to the field for some beautiful spring jumping yeah good ride here she gets that four done nice here oh i was thinking actually she got up there a little bit balanced but uh has A and B down. So, Mayor just not feeling it. Has the front pole of the Hermes. Actually, we've barely seen that come down. Just looks like Giselle's struggling a little bit with some stamina, maybe. And uh, picking up a few in a row. Okay, it looks like she's going to keep going. Just giving the horse some more experience. Just a little bit of a reach there through B. And unfortunately, not their day today for Michaela and Giselle. Yeah, I don't know. They uh, they had a good qualifying round. They, uh, they actually had a clear round in the first round of the Challenge Cup and then had one down. Uh, had a miscommunication in the jump off and maybe the mare just feeling a little bit insecure from that. And today, she's just not quite in the rhythm. With a few down. So one clear after uh, the start of this break with, uh, of course, uh, Kat Tyree there. Now on to Chris Yonowski with the polo jumps uh, Condor de Vel de C. Uh, takes us up to our, what, 29th of 42 in this uh, Grand Prix here this afternoon. $200,000 in the prize fund, Chris, with uh, the gelding that he's ridden in a number of the Grand Prix now. Just uh, having moved up through the uh, two stars and beyond. I say just getting a little bit more exposure into these uh, three and four stars this season for Chris. Yeah, he also had a great round clear in the Challenge Cup. Remember, all this second half basically was almost all clear because there were 17 that jumped clear in the qualifier. So these are the ones that are clearly doing well. And uh, Chris had a super round. And this horse really kind of getting into a good groove at the moment. And uh, does end up having a block that was, it was a little bit far off and the horse kind of just stuttered right on takeoff. And uh, they were actually lucky that it kind of all worked out the way that it did. He just pushed one block out of the way but then has the triple bar and the vertical after. I think all just kind of related to what happened at the wall. Can definitely throw off concentration yeah. a little bit. You know, I, I don't think that uh, Chris was anticipating that happen. He was just, he was kind of moving up on the longer one and then the horse just kind of stuttered a little bit. And then they had a bit of a funky jump at the wall and then that kind of screwed up the whole rest and snowballed down the rest of the line. But it's all right. He makes the call to say, you know what? We're going to raise the white flag and come back another day. Well, let's move on to uh, Kendra uh, Clarissa Brinkop now of Germany, riding for the uh, Stefex tables. Is uh, headed over here for essentially the second half of the season uh, here in Wellington as well with uh, Do It Easy, a uh, French bred horse by Vigo CC. Uh, hopefully they do it easy. We'll see. Well, she's certainly been doing it easy yeah. all season. Kendra came in here and uh, just like a wrecking ball, <laughs> and everybody had to get out of the way because she has just been dominating, placing after placing at the top in on the podium multiple times. Kendra, just such a tremendously strong rider. Yeah. Great to see her here competing and kind of showing everybody how it's done. Well, came in fresh, ready to go. As you say, very good rider based with the um, Stefex Stables in Belgium with the uh, Conte team there. Superb horses to go to there as well. I would think would be featuring into next week too. Yep, I would think so. Gearing up for the five start next week. Like I said, she's been doing it easy. Beautiful to watch too. I think she's yeah. very few mistakes, very correct about how she does things. Oh, unfortunately, it looked like the horse just kind of shifted as it took off and lost a little bit of height in the jump. 
again, that, that vertical at the Liverpool has been very difficult the whole time. But you can see Kendra knows there's only three clear, and she's thinking about her time. She really landed off that double, hugged the little uh, horse head standards that she had to go around. But she's just thinking, i got to be as neat and quick as possible. Very clever rider, you know, really knowing, like, hey, I had one down. Let me be as fast as I can and stay up. There's a lot of money, remember, $200,000 in this class. So, and if she can be the quickest four falter, she's going to be sitting in fourth, which could be great money and important, uh, valuable world ranking points. Gets over the last, and it is a pretty quick time. Yeah, just going to leave them on 76, uh, in fact, to go 80 into fifth place there, 76.85 on the four falls. Just the fatality uh, tipping out the cup step, gets a good splash as they drop into the tray, but uh, it leaves them on the four for uh, Kendra and uh, do it easy. They do do it easy, but not quite easy enough. Not quite easy enough today, but a beautiful round. Three clears at the moment in this Ida Developments uh, Grand Prix. Uh, one, two, and three being uh, Nina Malave, uh, Margie goldstein Engel, and uh, Kat Tyree so far. And uh, so it'll take us on now to Sloan Cole. Sloan with the Ninja Group's Ninja. Uh, very technical, that. Um, Belgian bred, uh, now 11-year-old uh, mare by uh, Elblis Teput for them. And, and for them, again, getting into more of the uh, four-star Grand Prix this season as, a, as again, a, a progressive stairway of moving up. Um, last few weeks saw them into the, the four-star Grand Prix back into uh, the early part of March. Jump round for 12 on that occasion. Uh, again, similar stuff through, you know, eights. Uh, and 12s into the three and four star Grand Prix. But again, this is this is development time. Yeah, absolutely. Sloan's been working with this horse for a number of years, just bringing her up to this high level. She's gotten more and more consistent all season here. And oh, make an adjustment here. Good job on Sloan's part to really make that adjustment and say, hey, come back to me. We have to fit this in. Don't want to have it down. Oh. Unfortunately, having B coming out of the double. She was trying to keep the balance up, but just not able to keep it up enough to get over B. Like we said, that's been a big troublesome spot all day long here. Of course, always nice to see this horse. You know that this is Gazelle's baby. Ah, oh, okay. From Ken Farrington. There we go. No, yeah. I did not know that. There we go. Yeah. A little bit of a touch at A. Gets over B, a little bit insecure with the front end at C, but gets over it. Clears the last, another one that's quite quick on the time, so she'll stay up there. Yeah. Quite solid round there for Sloan and Ninja. Yeah, it goes into fifth place there on the uh, four there for Sloan Coles. Just again, just one fence dropping. That's becoming the, the order of the last few, but again, different place. Just a bit of space there needed. Yeah, exactly. It looked like she actually rode A well, and then she just kind of tried to create the energy, and as she did that, she just created a little bit speed as she took off. Yeah, should have worked out the fact it says gazelle on there that it was that gazelle, but <laughs> yeah, yes, you, know, you, you don't think of it, you don't think, think you don't think of it that way around. Okay. Uh, Chloe Reed now, uh, team Reed of Ocala's uh, crossover for the Hanoverian by Cascadello, uh, has been a very consistent horse, has had a couple of ups and downs in the, in the Grand Prix, mainly due to a fence that's sitting on course at the moment as well. Uh, but I think we've got all that all worked out from that point of view. I yeah. say so she's been going really nice. She's had a nice run uh, for top three at uh, their home base show. Uh, in O'Connor at Live Oak just a few weeks ago. Well, actually, literally last week. Yeah. I know it all flies past. Yeah. Uh, but he's a really nice horse and a, and a really nice rider with it. Yeah, like we said uh, earlier on in the day, this horse just really impressing me so tremendously. Jumps the wall, no problem. And uh, just flying this horse. It is so careful. If you see photos of this horse, uh, Chloe posted some on social media and Wow, it is over the standards. It yeah. is just such an, a talented, athletic horse and always in the results. Chloe developed it herself, rides it so great. Look at that. Jumped out of that double better than any other horse we've seen in the class. Just pushed off and jumped high and up around B. Oh, what a shame. I was just talking about it. What a great jumper and unfortunately jumped up so high. Came down a little bit shallow at number nine. And uh, has the back pole of the Hermes. We have not seen that come down so much today. But catching Chloe out, unfortunately. Still love this horse, however. Great expression. Look at the beautiful jump there. The athleticism. I mean, this is really a talented horse. Huge jump at the last. But uh, 
conservative on the time, but good enough. Yeah. Unfortunately, with that just one down that we haven't really seen come down that much. Absolutely, good enough to go into uh, seventh place there. Just the Air Mares, just a flick behind. Yeah, usually maybe she that was a little far off. It yeah, I I'm going to say usually that's one that catches them out, but actually sitting where it's sitting. The, there's no water tray under it. It, it. They've made it, if you like, as kind as they can make that. Yeah, exactly. They're normally that orange uh, Hermes officer with the orange poles, like last night in the meter 50 final, we saw it, and it had the Liverpool, and it caught half the class out. Today, it's, like you said, as friendly as it can kind of be. No Liverpool, a little bit by itself, and you can kind of get a good shot at it. Look like Chloe was just a tiny bit too far off it. And uh, so on to Nal Nasa and the Evergate Stables uh, Ivory TCS. And so uh, now with the 11 year old, it was a, a new ride for him, former uh, winner of the New Nations Cup Grand Prix here with Daniel Coyle, of course, and with being a nice winner with uh, Niall now already. Yeah, they've had great results already with this horse. Again, clear in the Challenge Cup. Super fast horse, jumping great. This has been like instantaneous partnership with the two of them. Really suits Niall's light riding and. A little bit far off that wall, but so careful out of Ivory. And I must say, I really, uh, I love this partnership together. I think Niall does a great job and uh, absolutely been doing great together. Competitive, keep the balance up here. Yep, gets it done. Niall did a good job to keep her straight so she didn't shift right. And then, unfortunately, maybe just got a little bit too close there, building with the, s the blood and the speed a little bit. And then she's just kind of taking them a little bit past the last two jumps and looking like Niall. Yeah. Saying, you know what, we had two down. We're not, we know we're not going to win the class today. We've had such a good run all season. No need to kind of keep going on today's course. Okay, so deciding to retire this time for Niall Nasser and uh, take us into what a final group. One, two, about eight uh, left to go from that point of view uh, in this first round. Three clears at the moment. The last of those came from uh, Catherine Tyree as we opened up uh, the second half of the class. We went, oh, we'll, we'll have a string of yeah, the butt. I, I don't think we're getting to eight, I gotta be honest. Uh, but I'm gonna, throw, I'm gonna throw my, my butt in. But we're into the strongest in the qualifier. We are. Yeah, because we're getting reverse order. So let's go on to Mario Delori and the Wishing Well Farms at Bardolina 2. An Olympic ride uh, for Mario from that point of view, from the Wishing Well Farm of New York. Uh, usually a very consistent combination. They were second, actually, in the uh, Million Dollar Coachella Cup in uh, the Desert Horse Park last year as well, back in December. Again, not done too much this year. And again, with, with really for the this, he's really going to two horses at this level. So he, yeah. he doesn't go too deep into the well. No, absolutely, and uh, this horse super experienced. And Mario doesn't need too many horses because the ones that he picks are always top animals. I think he's one yeah. of the best horse pickers, certainly in the sport today, and always has good ones. He rides great. But some of that Keeping is it simple. Yeah. Some of that, do you not feel sometimes is not being rushed into? trying to get the right horse it's it's no. looking and waiting and yeah, deciding exactly. on the right horse i think he's patient about stuff yeah. you know he's not just i need need a horse and he buys whatever's there i think he really takes his time and uh selects ones that he thinks are going to be top athletes he's super neat around here in the brain java to get back to number 12. Ooh, a little bit of a rub at a tucks the hind end over b gets over it one left to go he's fine on the time and that'll be a clear. So your estimation there looking we go. like it was right. Occasionally I hit I hit the nail. Uh, just there on the uh, clear to give us uh, f the fourth clear round of our list so far. Mario Delore and uh, Bardolina too. There we go. Uh, nicely three for them. And as I say, we've got... Uh, well, I'm, I'm still going to stick. You stick to the eight? I, I think it might be overambitious. It might be near a six or seven. But, you know... I think we're going to... We get there what, pretty close. We're what, four what, already. Halfway. What the heck? I'm going to stick my neck right out. Um, yeah. Katie Dine, even if I don't believe it. Um, <laughs> Katie Dine and the Grant Road Partners uh, out of the blue SCF by Verdi. Now, really interesting to see this one as well for uh, the rider who won the President's Cup last year because this was uh, a horse with Shane Sweetenham going very nicely indeed. Uh, produced, uh, of course, with the Spike Coast Farm there by Verdi, which Michael van der Vleuten rode to, well, a, a long list of successes. <laughs> Everything there was Everything to win. Everything there was to win, including winning the World Championship with the teams and, and European championships as well. And uh, Katie now without the Blue 
USCF. And I'm going to be really interested to see how they get on because they went very nicely a few weeks ago. And they went unbelievable yeah. on uh, on Thursday. One of the best uh, horse rider combinations the whole day. I think this is a relatively newer partnership, but looking like they gel together beautifully. And uh, I think this horse jumps amazing for Katie. I love it. I love the, them together. Steady's up here for the wall, but then Katie keeps it active. That was well done. Stays out on the bend here. And really steadies up. She did a great job. She really steadied up right away, really had space. And then the mare had time to get herself out of the way. Oh, beautiful. Oh, jumped it beautifully. Just unfortunately barely touched it behind coming out. That was such a shame. I thought she set it up well, and the horse really jumped well in front out of the way and just ticked it behind. But again, I think this partnership developing so well. Great shot here. Out of the blue, really flying for Katie. And I don't think the success they're going to have is ever going to be out of the blue. I think it's going to be consistent. And it's nice to see her with a super top one in her string. So he is, and uh, very nicely done, but just on four. Goes into 10th place, and actually the full fault is getting rewarded at the moment yeah. uh, with the one fence down there for uh, Katie now to the blue SCF. But I think alongside Brego R&B, uh, this is going to be a really nice horse for her, what we've yeah. seen so far. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is going to end up being probably her top yeah. horse coming up. And look how great she did a super job there. Just silly light fault coming out of that teal double. Uh, Kathleen Driscoll now, the Plain Bay Farms, uh, Casaletto, the Holsteiner by uh, Cascadello. Ten years of age uh, for uh, Kathleen. For her, she's again had a really good step-up season. It really started last year in Traverse City from that point of view. She came out leading rider there. And, of course, with the Prudences, uh, again, progressed through the Winter Equestrian Festival very nicely. This, this is a horse that's just been getting the more exposure before she has the first fence. But, uh, again, I'm putting that to one side, really, of what we, we're going to see. But, I mean, with Arome and with Flotilla, she's put wins together already this season and gone very nicely on this to really sort of start getting this horse into this level. Yeah, exactly. She had a great uh, round in the qualifier on Thursday also. This is a very, very scopey horse. <laughs> Silly to have num jump one down. It's always such a frustrating fault to have, and now she's thinking about being neat and organized. thing with this horse, he needs a little bit of time at the jumps, so as quick as she wants to be, she knows she needs to take her time because she has to leave the jumps up, most importantly. She can be neat on her track, but needs to have space on takeoff so that the horse can kind of get that front end out of the way. Well done there. Unfortunately, she will have the back pull of the out of the three. Just look like maybe started to turn as he was jumping it at the end. Just slightly kind of dove left across it. Let's see if we get a replay of that again. Takes his time through here again. This is a really scopey horse. I mean, he'll be able to jump everything there is in the, in the world. But uh, today, just having a couple down. But she had a good week regardless. Yeah, finishes on eight at 75.74. And uh, so Casaletto, uh, fence, first fence one just starts to shape that line a little bit. Yeah, a little bit uh, right to left angle at number one. And then she kind of added leg. You could see her squeeze right at the takeoff and has the front pole. And then here, jumps it. But she's looking like around the turn already early and maybe just kind of shifting left as she gets across it and just doesn't finish the hind end to get across the width of that oxer. Three, four clears at the moment and uh, leaving us, what, five left to go into our list. And this horse is another one that jumped a beautiful clear yeah. the other day. Not surprised to hear that no. with uh, Cornets Cambridge and Nick De La Joyo for the Berry Group. Uh, jumped superbly last year on this 12-year-old by Beludo Avonton. And then, of course, Nick was out with injury himself for a while, yeah. um, gave the horse a break. They've just been coming back very, very quietly at the tail end of this season just to sort of get themselves back in the groove here. But a really consistent horse, of course, by Beludo Avonton that was the, the brilliant horse that's been jumped through to, to Arkin with wins with uh, Brian Mogray now, uh, uh, jumped some amazing rounds. Uh, later on with Harry Charles and before that, of course, uh, with Dara Kenny and uh, so superbly. But, um, I mean, it was one of the most 
top horses of the year. Yeah. But as I say, just had to sit on the sidelines for a while, unfortunately. Yeah, but I think they're back at it now, yeah. actually. Uh, Harry was saying horses jumping again. And, uh, of course, Balu also doing a lot of breeding in uh, recent years. We've used him a bunch, and it's really uh, it's a good one. It's actually not, uh, not super easy, I think, to get semen at the moment. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. We'll leave that alone. Yeah, I think. yeah. yeah. But, uh, Let, let's concentrate on this one right yeah, now. Right. Cornets Cambridge came out really nicely. Back onto the, we mentioned the spring shows earlier and and had a really good standout there in in a year or so back as well from that point of view. But then started coming out onto onto teams, the US, etc. But just really getting back in the groove here for the season again. Just getting match practice. Yeah, and of course Nick was out for a little bit with his own injury, yeah. so he's just back up to this level as well. But it's looking like the partnership is just as good as it's always been. Oh, unfortunately, back pole. We've seen that now come down a couple of times this second half, more so than it did in the first half. And uh, horses maybe just anticipating the turn a little bit. They say just a corner. little move in the air there. Yeah, just shifting a bit left. And unfortunately, having C out of the triple, we have not seen that one come down so much. But uh, pretty solid round, but just picking up two. Yeah, two down, finish on eight there for Nick de la Joya and uh, Cornets Cambridge this time. As I say, uh, watch out for them coming back into action, though. And uh, here, back to the plank. Jumps this good, but then look. Again, almost yeah. turning a little bit in the air as he jumped that. Maybe just needed to hold him a little bit straighter and then think about the turn. And then here, jumps this. Just a little bit of a touch there coming out at sea. So taking us to uh, Emily Conter now and uh, Trixie Zed. I saw Sister Zoe a little bit earlier on. Again for the Step X Stables. And uh, by their stallion, Tobago Zed. It's a little bit of a look of uh, Dad. So yes, it is. <laughs> it certainly is. Now, again, similar talent, one hopes. So we've seen them a few times so far this season now. And they've been really good again. Yeah. They were super the other day in the qualifier. Compa yeah, we're compact little chestnut, just like his dad. Yeah. Just like her dad. It's almost as a, 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 an almost a little bit bigger, but pony-esque feel to it. Just really lovely, compact. Yeah, exactly. Short looks head to tail. But, but looks like you'd have power. fun. Yeah, loads of power there. Looks like a really fun horse to ride. Yeah. It's into our top four from qualifying earlier on this week as well. Nice tidy turn back. She's looking good so far. And ah. I was going to say, you could see the balance as she got through there. And I was thinking maybe they were going to get away with it, but she just balance was a little bit low, head and neck a little bit low on the bent, on the landing side from A, just not able to kind of push off and away from B. It's again, same thing that we're seeing a lot of people have anytime we've seen that teal double especially in that position there was a class earlier in the season that had i think the pale blue uh poles and those similar colored poles in the double like that off of a little bit of a gappy line hard for the horses to do sets up the last nicely gets through that but left to settle with the one down there let's take a look at it again so she jumps a and then you can see the head and the neck drop down a little bit, and gets over it in front, but then just never was able to finish that hind end. Like you said, there's the front end, but then you can't forget about the hind end. And jumps that nice. Top three having come through uh, from our qualifier earlier on this week, and uh, Pier Giorgio Bucci and uh, Hantano for the Iron Horse Farm for the Italian who's been with us throughout the winter season as well. Also uh, went very nicely with this horse up in Sarasota too. And uh, so we'll see what uh, has been for his season. Again, he's been moving through a couple of the venues. And uh, again, gives him a good opportunity this week. And actually, Hantano jumped a couple of weeks ago. Looked really nice there too. Let's see. Yeah. And I talked to PG a little bit after yeah. the Challenge Cup on Thursday. And he said, oh, finally. Got a good <laughs> one. Got a good round in. He was like, we've been knocking at the door. Yeah. And it's just, uh, just silly things kept happening. And he was really happy to get a really good, nice double clear. And that's what I mean. You you felt you watched them have nice rounds. There's just the odd error somewhere that you went, oh, that's frustrating. Yeah, but exactly. You could see that it was there. He's looking solid again so far. Like he said, I think really getting into the rhythm right now. 
Can he get through this du difficult double E? Yes, he can. Rides up to number nine. And now the delicate plank gets around that. Just needs to stay straight here. Ooh, and again, same kind of thing. We're seeing the back pole of that come down. Far more in this second half than in the first half. I don't know if they're just not quite getting up there enough in the three or anticipating the turn a little bit. But it has A coming into the triple as well. So, unfortunately, not going to be another clear for PG and Hantana. No, it isn't. It's uh, a total of eight. It's four clears so far, not getting to the eight. Uh, but unfortunately, I thought that was probably going to be the case. No, um, I don't think so. We're not making it to the eight. We could have a couple yet. Those take us to six, which will get near enough. Uh, and as you say, just been getting there close. They almost got across there again. Yeah, it was just a light fall. Yeah, just felt again. They're just starting to get into the turn. As you say, you've got to clear and go. Yeah, exactly. You've got to stay straight, jump it, and then turn. You want to look and use your eye, but sometimes if you do that a little bit of a fraction of a second too early, you can actually throw the balance of the horse off and then they'll come down out of the air a little too early. But then you watch people like, I'm going to take, take Kevin Stoughton as an example, you'll see them over a fence completely looking yeah, to somewhere else jump. to the yeah. next jump. So they do a good job then using just swiveling their head and yeah. not using their upper body at all. Moving like an eagle. Yeah. Um, Carlos <laughs> Sancarero and H5 uh, Ganesh Hero Z. What a lovely uh, few weeks he's been having as well for the 23-year-old. Uh, uh, Grand Prix winner up at uh, Ocala in the last few weeks as well to really set them up very nicely. Uh, he had a five-star win with uh, Chaco San into the uh, weeks here into the uh, latter part of February there as well, into week seven, as it would have been for us. Yep. Oh. And just has that down, unfortunately. Yeah, again, we've seen that now come down two or three times and uh, not so typical, but it is off that eight stride. You've got to make sure you get up to the base of it and you can stay out and get a little bit lost in that eight and then just end up slightly off it. And then the triple bar comes becomes a little bit wider. Gets through the difficult, difficult double, no trouble at all. But uh, having the back rail on the triple bar. Oh, and the plank as well. So that plank causing trouble all day long for people. We went through a good run recently where they actually were doing a good job clearing it. But like you said, Carlos has been having a great season today. Not going to be able to take the win, but certainly a solid round. Keeps moving to the last. Gets over that time quick enough Yeah. with the two down. Puts him on eight at 76.68 for uh, Carlos Sangrero there and H5 uh, Ganesh Hero Z. One to come. Uh, look back here at the cask. Triple. Yeah. And, and really essentially jumped it like an oxer. Just yeah, yeah, exactly. Just jumped kind of the first two and then really not across the back of that triple bar. Remember, triple bar is significantly wider than anything else on the course. And it's set at 1 meter 56. But in theory, should get you up in the air. It should, right? You should be able to get right to the base, use a little bit extra pace to kind of get right to the base because you don't have to worry so much about the front pole. But uh, if you are a little bit soft at it and a tiny bit off, it just yeah. feels real wide. Yeah, exactly. So last to go, winner of our uh, qualifier earlier on this week, that Adequan Weft Challenge Cup, Lily Keenan uh, on the hot form right now and the Chansonette Farm Zagana Van Het uh, Garandel Z with the uh, Stallion Aggie. Here we go. Uh, can she wrap it up to be a double? I think uh, we might have had two doubles this year. McLean Ward and I think Ken Farrington both won the qualifier yeah, and a Grand, Grand Prix. Prix. Not an easy feat. Off the top of my head. Not an easy feat to do. Let's see if Lily can do it. It's a wonderful stallion of hers. She rode great, I thought, on Thursday. And uh, always hard to whoop, win. Whoop. Big adjustment there, but she gets it done. Always hard to win with a jump off with so many in it. Because uh, you know you got to be so fast, but... Can she keep it together for today? Or are we going to be just with four? Ooh, she gets through that double, getting a little bit lower and a little bit close. She's going to have to keep that balance up and make sure. And she's making an adjustment here. Good job. She keeps them straight. Couple more to jump. Looks like he's getting a little bit strong with her. Sets up A, jumps through B beautifully, gets over C. One left to go. She's good on the time. 
Good sh ride to the last, and that'll give us five. That gives us five. Gets it done again. Lily Keenan looking for the double here with a Ghana Van Hits, uh, Garandale Z. So Lily Keenan uh, brings that home as well. Nicely done for her. That's a very tidy one. And uh, so five into the jump off overall as we complete the first round of this $200,000 Ida development uh, four star Grand Prix. And so challenging today. Yeah. Not super easy. We were over eager with our eight as a guesstimation. But Absolutely. We'll take the five. We'll take it, we'll take it. And uh, so there are the five. Uh, and it is Nina Malave, uh, Margie Gold, Steve Engel, Catherine Tyree Flores, Mario Delory, and uh, Lily Keenan all progressing to the jump off of this Ida Development uh, Four Star Grand Prix presented by Barn Walkers uh, here this afternoon. Uh, lovely afternoon here in Wellington. A little bit of breeze. Sun is coming down. It's exactly what Palm Beach is supposed to be like. And uh, we will be back in a few minutes' time with the jump off for the decider. Five go in. Uh, we'll kick off with France. We've got three for the USA, one for Canada, but uh, certainly we have five. Five uh, top class combinations coming back for that. So, arena team just uh, going to make some adjustments for the jump off, and we're back with the, the showdown for this uh, Sunday afternoon presentation. Back in a minute. Cowboy hustle is physically demanding. No doubt you gotta be tough. But even more important is your mental fitness. Your brain has to be firing on all cylinders to perform, to be clear, to concentrate, and to focus. I'm a father, a cowboy, a businessman, and a musician, and so much more. I drink Brain Java House Brew, packed with the brain power blend of essential vitamins and minerals my brain needs every day to get it done. Low in natural sugar, low in calories, low in carbohydrates, and low in sodium. It's a great natural and healthy alternative to energy drinks. Brain job. Be mindful, be present, turn on your brain.
Well, set to go into our jump off of this uh, 200,000 at Ida Development uh, Four Star Grand Prix presented by Barn Walkers. Our thanks to uh, both involved there as well as say if you uh, would like to find out more and you're on site, that would be just great. You can uh, head over uh, to between the area between the McGarvro and the International Arena where they will happily give the uh, advice down there for you as well. But both companies work together to bring a, a variety of world-class products to fit every need for your uh, farm and your horses as well. And so you can visit them on site too and also you can head to their website for all their contact details as well for both companies uh, but very much kept busy in this uh, local area and across the united states and beyond uh, for uh, both those uh, wonderful supporters here at wellington international we're set to go to jump off we're going to take a look at the course uh, for that jump off as well and uh, five into it and uh, fidelity investments kindly again sponsoring our uh, tour of the course uh, around this uh, track set by andy christensen here five of them to go for it so let's take a look under the bridge and uh, animation of what it looks like for here danny what have we got we can see a big starting point down near the entrance end of the arena. Yes, starts off at 8B, which is the vertical out of that teal double, then right-handed turn, 2-9, so a rollback directly at number 9, then down to number 10. I believe we're going to see some 7 strides. I think there's a pole on top now, no longer a plank, and then a left-handed rollback as tight as they can to those avocado-colored rails at number 12, and then we'll see how many strides they do. It was 7 and then a 1 Maybe we get eight, nine, we'll see, to the Oxer Vertical 13 BC. And then it's a right-hand turn around the gazebo to the new jump IDA Development Vertical. And then straight shot to another new jump, the Lovesta Oxer, to finish it off at number 16. Walked about six and three quarters. We'll see if they can do six or seven strides down that last line. Or if you can do three quarters, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hopefully not three quarters. Okay, three quarters do. might be a problem. Yeah. Uh, let's go in with uh, Nina Malave of uh, France to start us off. And this is Cartier uh, SR for the uh, Rain family. For the uh, French rider, as I say, was top three into the early Grand Prix, the NetJets Grand Prix for an all-lady finish there with uh, Tiffany Foster and Luciana Lossio going back to uh, the early weeks. What was that about week three? Uh, we were a month into competition by Something then. Like that. Three, and four. Yeah, somewhere around that uh, area. But again, she's sh shown some solid form throughout as well. And uh, she's going to be our pacemaker of the five. Margie Engels come, uh, Kat Tyree Flores, uh, Mario Delory, and finally Lee Keenan looking for a double. All right, off she goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Vertical on. Now it's just a pole on top. And now left hand to turn, rolling back on this green avocado oxer. Little skinnier. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Into the oxer vertical, one stride. And now right handed. This horse has a big stride covering the ground to the new IDA development vertical. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. There is definitely a six there, but she finishes up on a super double clear. 38-41. Yeah, there we go. 38-41 and clear for Nina Malave at Cartier SR. Lovely round uh, put together for them, and so just very tidily puts things together to uh, be a nice uh, target for them to go at here from uh, Nina. So from there... We will go from France to the United States and uh, one of the most winning most riders here in the US and beyond it as well. Margie Goldstein Engel and the Glade Winds Farms, uh, Jack of Hearts. 66 years young, Miss Margie. Yeah, I think that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. But she is unbelievable. Hundreds of Grand Prix wins to her name. Let's see if she can add another one today. That time now, 38.41 to beat. And uh, I unfortunately do think it is beatable yeah but uh nina did put the pressure on by jumping the double clear so everyone's now going to have to come catch her and that of course makes it more challenging because you want to be fast and then you have to leave the jumps up margie's off to the races let's see what she does Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. i think nina did eight Eight. She does one more there. She does have the back rail of number nine. Now comes the rollback to the avocado rails. They did narrow this up a little bit. There is a Liverpool under it. Does the nine into the double. Nice shot here. 
And again, only the five clear. So you know you're guaranteed top spots, but how high up will depend on everybody else. Gets over the last, but a little bit slower and with the one down. Yep, so puts him on 440, uh, 144 for uh, Margie there. And uh, well, regardless, he's going to have a good finish in this Grand Prix here today. Turning back to the uh, MS fence, just getting that a little bit on the angle, just got a little too wide for them in the end. Yeah, exactly. She did a couple more strides than Nina did. Maybe she was just a little bit dead on takeoff there. Uh, didn't quite have the power to jump across it. Kat just waving her hand, so they pause her start clock for her. Again, time allowed is 47 seconds in this jump off. Not that that usually plays a role, but just so we are aware. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it has before now. It's not going to hear because obviously she's round. That we've already got round at 38:41. But you know, if you're going for a steady clear and you're yeah, in the top few, know. yeah, you know, you we never did know. actually see a time fault uh, in the jump off last night. Yeah. All right, and she's off. A little bit wider than Nina. I think she did maybe one more stride, but does the seven here. And now she's going to have to be neat back here. Luckily, they did narrow this up, so you can be tight. I think she's slightly wider, but she's still moving. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now she's going to have to really run across the middle. This horse has a big stride. She's covering the ground. Will she do six? Let's see. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. No. So it does the nice steady seven. Very quick, but not fast enough. Yeah, 40.33. So goes into second there for Kat Tyree Flores and uh, Camilla Z for them. So Nina Malave keeping the lead at the moment, 38.41. Very nice, though. Yeah, I super think, you know, solid really round. tidy in front horse. You know, it looks a, looks a nice powerhouse that's going to keep, keep coming along. Yeah, I mean, I think a beautiful double clear for Kat. Yeah. I don't think she'll be too disappointed with the uh, top finish like that. Mario Delorier now and uh, the Canadian with uh, Bartolina too for the Wishing Well Farm. Right. His Olympic ride has the ability here. As I say, finished second in the million dollar class in December. Uh, there's some, some space here. 38.41, the time to beat. He does the eight like Nina. This horse has a huge stride. I bet he'll be able to do the six if the jumps are all still up by then. Trying to be quick here. And takes the first one. That was a good shot. Yeah. He kept the leg on, made sure to get through it. to get steady up here for the double. And now he's going to have to run. Again, this horse has a tremendous stride. Can he keep the jumps up? Ooh. Steady's up for the seven. But pretty quick, and I think quick enough. It is quick enough. 37.23 takes just over a second off the time. And so Mario Delorier now in front with Bartolina 2. Nina Malave in second with uh, Cartier SR, leaving one to come in the uh, jump off here this afternoon. Mario, Good home and host. Here. Yeah, I mean, that was a super ride. Horse has a tremendous stride to cover the ground. But we're going to have to see with the one left winner from our Challenge Cup. Can Lily catch him? New time, 37.23. And by my quick looking down, it would be the third combination if they could do it this season to win the Challenge Cup and the Grand Prix. And I'm going to correct myself a little. It was Ben Mayer. Ah, Ken, it was ben. Ken, Ken has done it in the past. Ben Mayer uh, did it back on to week one. And, of course, McLean Ward last week as well on to week ten. Yep. So it could be the third time for the season if uh, Lily Keenan can pull this off. And she could well do that. We will she see. She certainly could. She's very fast on this combination as they won a 17-horse jump off the other day. Let's see if Lily can catch Mario, who put in a very solid round. I don't think Lily will attempt the six down the last line. I think Mario might have been our only one that really could have done that. But uh, he stayed patient. I just feel this pair may have a bit more foot speed. They do. They have yeah. a lot of foot speed. And she is off to the races to number one. But she's got to leave the jumps up. Oh, great shot here. Beautifully ridden. Three, four, five, six. Ste sevens. Steady's up in the seven. Now she's going to be tight. This is super tight. Got to keep going. Puts the leg on. Great shot. Does the eight. Has to leave the jumps Ooh. up. Come on, Aggie. Yeah. She's inside of Mario's tracks. Can she keep it up here? Takes a good angle here. Two, 
three, four, five, six, seven. Clears it. Does she catch him? I think she's she gonna, does. She's going to. 35, 75 takes another second and a half off. She'll do the double. <laughs> Lily Keenan and Agana Van Het Garandel said. So that's what, two Grand Prix in two weeks for her and uh, also uh, the Grand Prix qualifier as well. Uh, quite the fortnight. Quite the fortnight. Lily just killing it in the sport at the moment. Absolutely. Tremendous performance. So happy that they were able to take both the Challenge Cup and the Grand Prix here. She does the double. Uh, what a super way for Lily to head into the rest of the year. I know she's got a big year ahead of her already on that short list for the Olympics, and she's got to be on cloud nine at the moment. Absolutely. So uh, they bring home the win. Lily Keenan and uh, Garner Van Het Garandel Zed, we said, for a double this week. Mario Deloria going close for the Canadian in second. Nina Malave, another top three in the Grand Prix here this year. It's been a very good season for the young French rider. Uh, Catherine Tyree Flores finishing into fourth. Margie Engel in top five. Carl Cook, uh, the best from round one. He was four faults and a fast four faults to finish in sixth. Seventh place to Sloane Coles. Eighth place to Kendra Clarissa Brinkop of Germany. Ninth to Chloe Reed and top ten for Luciana Lossi of uh, Brazil. Presentation coming uh, your way. Like we say, we'll be back next week for the finale for uh, Rolex Week. Looking forward to that. And uh, of course, make sure you tell your friends on that one. And on Wednesday, I'll be back with WEF Weekly with a all-star lineup for that. I can tell you it is an all-star lineup. Do not miss that. Five o'clock on uh, Wednesday as well. That's going to be on USCF Network and across, of course, the Wellington International channels as well. And uh, we have a serious week of jumping coming up for you. I am not underestimating that one by any stretch of the imagination. A uh, number of the big European names are also heading in. Uh, it is going to be a gloves-off week here in Wellington. Look forward to it. And uh, our final punch of this week has been landed by uh, Lily Keenan and Agana. Presentation coming up as our team just make their way across. And uh, I will introduce you to them as they uh, head into position as well. And our thanks to Ida Development. Uh, their motto, you dream it, we build it. From barns, homes and custom areas to stalls, walkers and treadmills to rubber flooring. And an exclusive distributor of Equitan flooring as well. And uh, they have installed over 45,000 square feet of Equitan flooring here at Wellington International too. And uh, as I say, this also presented by uh, barn walkers as well. So a thanks to them as we get ready for the presenting part and also the presentation of our international leading rider of the week that is presented with uh, Martha Jolly Kerr uh, combined with Michael and Wendy Smith to uh, come and make the presentation for that as well and that will be nice and easy I love the weeks when it's easy to work out because if you won the qualifier and you won the Grand Prix you are leading international rider because it's based on points of those both classes so um, must be Lily <laughs> it must be Lily like they're just getting set up for that prize giving. What a tremendous day of show jumping this was. Can't believe week 11 concluding here. Yes. Very impressive. We've made it this far, but the best is yet to come for next week's Rolex week. Yep, take your vitamins, get get ready, get uh, get some sleep over the next couple of days and be ready for a massive week of sport next week uh, here in Wellington. It's been on fire here in Florida in the last few weeks with competition and we are certainly taking up a notch with our $500,000 Grand Prix next Saturday night as well. A reminder too, we'll have a Grand Prix show in the build up to that. Uh, as well kicking off things again I've got a wonderful line of experts in there as well and uh, looking forward to that to give you a little bit of a rundown of what's going to take place uh, in that Grand Prix Danny's going to be catching up with the riders we're going to be busy between the two of us yeah. and and all our team and so our top three heads on in and uh, in third place for Nina Malave and uh, Cartier SR second for uh, Mario Delore and uh, top three of course headed up by Lily Keenan I want to uh, welcoming out our presenters as well and uh, that it will be presented by Bobby Rotman, owner of uh, Equus Solutions, and uh, Chloe Reimer presenting on behalf of Ida Develop as well to our leading lineup here. And as I say, also the presentation of the Double H Farms $500 Grooms Award uh, that will be presented too. Thank you very much to them as they present that each week as well. And uh, all set. was such a great day of sport. Nina putting in a great performance. Mario almost clinching the victory, but Lily swiping it from him at the end. <laughs> and there is our winner. Looking like she is 
having a good day on her trusty steed. And with her groom. And so coming forward is the rider finishing in third. It is uh, Nina Malave and the Rain family's uh, Cartier SR. I say that is the second Grand Prix they've been on the podium for this season. Pretty good season so far. It was nice. They started out really strong. They had a couple of hiccups midway through and now back on the podium. Great way to finish out this season. And I'm sure they got more jumping to do next week. Congratulations to them. Okay, moving on to second place and uh, Mario Delorier and the uh, Wishing Well Farms Bardolina too. Consistent as ever. Smile on his face for a good afternoon. And I would like to be once spot up, but they'll take the second. It's still not, it's still not a bad day at the office. Exactly, two hundred thousand. Thirty-three percent goes to the winner. Yeah, I was just doing some quick math. There's yeah. also so sixty odd thousand to the winner, and then that probably leaves you about forty-ish to something like that. Yeah, not a bad day at the office. Yeah. Nice smiles there for our second place finisher. And winning combination to come forward is uh, Lily Keenan and the uh, Chantelet Farms. Agana Van Het Garandel said to give the full title. No to all of us as Aggie. And uh, he comes forward with Lily. And a great week for Lily here at the IDA development. Four star week 11. Yeah. Domination <laughs> by the female American rider. And yeah, just confirmed, as I suspected, uh, even my maths can run to that one. <laughs> uh, leading international rider this week as well, of course, being uh, Lily Keenan, winning both the Grand Prix and the Grand Prix qualifier, of which those points are based across as well. And uh, there to Michael and Wendy Smith, and joined uh, by, uh, of course, Martha Jolicoeur as well to present, and uh, with uh, Dr. Stephen Norton presenting the award. Aggie looking excited for his win. Get a good picture. And so coming to the national anthem, our winning rider. It is uh, very well done to uh, Lily Keenan. And of course, the anthem of the United States of America. Well, as the anthem fades away, we get ready for the lap of honor. Getting ready. Well done to all of our winners here. Oh, looking like another award. Yeah, first. Grooms Awards. There we go. Double H Farm Grooms Award going to uh, the Chazanet team there. Well done. Love to see that support of the support staff that we cannot do any of this sport without well rewarded for their efforts. And so it is victory gallop time for Lily Keenan and uh, Ghana as they set off. It rounds off uh, week 11 of the Winter Equestrian Festival. We're ticking off the weeks 
Uh, and uh, as much as it's been exciting, it's almost slightly sad to be getting close to the end. But we are excited for next week because it is going to be something special indeed. Like I say, we have some uh, real firepower coming to town uh, next week here in Wellington. So make sure you tune in all week. We'll actually bring you classes from Wednesday. Uh, we've got a ranking class on Wednesday. Thursday, of course, is the Grand Prix qualifier. Friday is the usual shootout there as well in the one rounders, and then Saturday a night for that uh, Rolex Grand Prix as well. So all of that to come, and uh, no doubt she'll be a part of that too. But a super week, double up for uh, Lily Keenan. Thanks, Danny, for joining us. And uh, I've left much of it in your hands this week. Yep. And I will be back in full flow next week as well with, with Danny and all the team. Uh, we look forward to that uh, for now from here in Wellington. Have a good couple of days. We'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone.